All right, good. So again, welcome to the demo on the 26th of October. On Monday, this is live. There is a recording for the demo. If you uh, have questions, you can obviously let us know if you're watching this recording later on, if you're not here joining us right now. So I asked everyone what type of trader they were, and there's a lot of answers. Uh, swing trader, long stock trader, credit spread trader, this type of trader, that type of trader. The reason I asked this question is because I think it's fascinating. And I said this on the last demo on Thursday night as well. I just don't think I got it on recording like I want to get on recording now. But I would say that the problem with classifying yourself as a trader is that essentially, and this is what somebody had said, and I think it's true, you lose about 30 IQ points the second that you box yourself in. So if you think about it, if you say you're a swing trader, automatically your mind shuts off all possibilities subconsciously to anything that doesn't look like what you classify yourself as. So I would encourage you as you move down your trading journey or continue down your trading journey to maybe not try to box yourself into being a type of trader. You might gravitate towards some types of strategies that might be your style and profile, but don't box yourself in to think that you're just one type of trader. Because if you do, you're going to miss an opportunity to do something different. You might miss an opportunity to start learning a new trading style that might not be everything to you, but it might help improve your portfolio. So the reason I asked this is was totally a comment kind of leading in the direction. Don't answer that you're this type or that type. Try not to be a type of trader. Try to be the type of person who's pretty open-minded about things. I think it'll help out. I think you guys enjoy that. All right, good. So just a couple little housekeeping items as everyone kind of continues to filter in here. So if you haven't been on a demo with us before, by the way, how many people have been on a demo before? John, this has got to be your fifth one. I see you in there. Is this your fifth or sixth one? Multiple times. Wayland, yep. Third time. Okay, good. So we got some newbies in here. We've got some, some veterans in here. All right, great. By the way, if you're brand new in here, if you've been in here a couple times, you know that some of our team members are in here. We've got Rocco and Rob and Mike in here helping out. This is a video of what they look like in email and chat support. So please uh, just be you know, a little bit patient and respectful of the fact that there are hundreds of you and only a few of them, uh, but we'll make sure we get all your questions and all your stuff answered um, just as quickly as we can. Thank you, one, for showing up today. Appreciate it so much. Um, thank you to my team for being here to help support me in doing this. Couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you so much. If you've never been on a webinar or demo with us, I can promise you this. You're not going to be like this kid today and you won't get blindsided by anything. So we're going to have a pretty clear agenda. We're going to go through things, but more importantly, what you won't ever see on any of our demos or webinars is no crazy bonus stacking slides or hard pushes, no special action discounts where you have to like sign up by the end of the webinar or, but wait, there's more crap that happens at the end. I truly hate all of that stuff. And so we're always going to treat you like an adult and with respect. We're not going to, you know, have countdown timers that say, oh, you've got to sign up by the end of this webinar and then you get this special thing. And, but wait, we'll double your order. Like I hate all of that stuff. So we just want to get that out of the way right up front. So you know what to expect. If that sounds good to you, if you've never been here before, you can say hallelujah. Amen. That's awesome. Um, seems like it kind of, I know, breaks the ice as we head into this um, and it makes it a little bit more clear for everyone. So so that being said, let's just get, you know, what we're going to talk about at the end right out of the way up front. This is what we're going to be talking about at the end. I'm sure it's potentially why a lot of people are here to see the demo and see if they want to join Lifetime. We'll talk about it in detail at the end, but that's what we're going to be talking about that ends on November 1st. If you don't know who I am, I'm Kirk. I'm the founder and CEO of Option Alpha. Been married 10 plus years, lucky man. I've got uh, three beautiful kids, potentially high volatility kids. Actually, I know they're high volatility because they were jacked up after this weekend. They went pumpkin uh, hunting with their aunt and uncle. And, um, and so now we've got all these pumpkins that are carved in the middle of our house. Um, and they're just totally jacked up about it. My son, Colin, tried to sleep with his pumpkin the other night, uh, which was, didn't go down well when I told him no. Uh, but I used to be an M&A investment banker for a little bit in New York, was a read analyst in DC, uh, angel, angel and venture investor. And frankly, I just love anything trading and finance related. I've got four simple goals today to, for our time together. Uh, goal number one is to give you guys a really clear agenda on what we're going to be doing. Goal number two is to understand what you need, to hear your feedback, your suggestions, your solutions, the way that you think about things. That's why I ask all these questions because I'm truly curious about it. It helps improve our platform. Number three, I'm going to show you how the platform works. We're going to spend a lot of time in the demo. 
number four, so that you can make the best possible decision. And so hopefully that's why you're here today. Just want to give you as much information as you can. If it's for you, for you, great. If it's not for you, great. At least you know and you have all the information. Does that sound good? Agree? Anybody have questions on that? Where there's no misaligned expectations? Okay, cool. And yeah, actually, we're going to be talking about the new smart pricing stuff. Um, we're going to be uh, walking through some slides on that today. So some of the new stuff in here um, that we haven't talked about before. So today's agenda and me not so secretly accomplishing goal number one, we're going to do a brief overview of the new Option Alpha platform, the 10,000 foot view. If you've never heard of the stuff that we have coming, I want to kind of talk at you know the high level about the things that are rolling out. Number two, we're gonna quickly understand what bots and automations are. If you're a really, really smart engineering, mathematical mindset type person, you'll get this very quickly, but I wanna make sure we spend time on it because the context of how bots and automations are set up is really important. If you understand, just take a little bit of time to focus in on it right now. It'll make everything so much easier moving forward. Number three, we're gonna go through the live demo. So that's where we'll spend the bulk of our time, obviously. And number four, we'll show you kind of the timeline and the post-launch roadmap and just answer a ton of Q&A. Like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of Q&A lightning rounds as we go throughout the demo today. Um, so if you have an opportunity to ask a question, and if you don't necessarily get that question answered right then and right there, please make sure that you just stay on, just ask the question later on, wait for us to answer it. Sometimes it, this is like a puzzle and like a great movie where, you know, bits and pieces come together at different stages. So, you know, I would encourage you just to be patient and and also let you know, like, I'll stay on here as long as possible to answer every question that we possibly get um, at the end. I'll just, you know, stay on and just rifle through as many questions as I can get through, okay? So the first thing I know that most people have questions on is brokers. So let me address the broker question really quick. Um, it sounds like it's mostly the most important one here. So with regard to brokers, we have an active integration with Thinkorswim right now. That's the broker that we're going to be launching with. We did sign the agreement with TradeStation a couple weeks ago, which means that we will have an integration with TradeStation. We're working on that integration. As soon as it's ready, we'll roll it out. TradeStation is great for us because it effectively allows us to open up the, the countries of traders that we support to about 120 countries around the world. So if you're in Germany, the UK, Spain, Portugal, Brazil, Mexico, China, India, Indonesia, the Philippines, Australia, et cetera, you can basically have the opportunity to trade through Option Alpha and through TradeStation. So I'd encourage you to go to the beta page, check out the list of countries that we support. We also do have an integration planned with Tradier. That agreement's signed and done. So we just have to build that out for you guys. And then finally, we do have an active agreement that we're working on with Trade uh, Tastyworks, but it's not signed yet. So I just want to be clear on this. We do not have the official ink signed on the agreement. We've been going back and forth with them for uh, quite some time, uh, going back and forth on the legal agreements with uh, their team, and they know that. So, But anything you guys can do to help push this along would definitely be helpful on our end. You can just shoot them an email and say, hey, look, I know you guys are working with Option Alpha, but you know, the sooner that we can get the news on the agreement, at least, the better. Um, that would all obviously help on our end. Uh, but that's that's one that we're very hopeful for. I'm, I'm very hopeful that we'll have an opportunity Op, uh, optimistic that we'll have an agreement with tra Trade Tastyworks, but we just don't have the ink on that signed yet. Okay, that makes sense. Um, other brokers, and this is just not limited to these, but just generally other brokers that we don't support. We don't support E-Trade. We don't support Interactive Brokers. We don't support Robinhood. We don't support Fidelity. Uh, don't support Merrill Edge because I saw that in the chats in here. You know, for one reason or another, either these brokers don't have a way for us to integrate through an API. So there's no way for us to connect our system to theirs. Uh, that would be the most classic case with Robinhood. I would love to connect to Robinhood, but they don't have a, an integration allowable, an API allowable for us to connect with them. So you can obviously push them a little bit for us. Again, this is where you as traders and you know clients of all of these brokers, this is where you guys have a say and you can you know push them along and tweet at them and message them and say, hey, we wanna integrate with Option Alpha. That helps them you know get things out to us faster. Other brokers that have integration or have the capability of integrating but just don't have the updated APIs that we would require include things like interactive brokers and E-Trade, 
they have an API, but it just doesn't allow us to do what we need to do or that basically you guys are demanding that you need to do, like complex orders and monitoring positions, automated trading. A lot of it is pretty, uh, pretty basic and pretty simple, or they do one or two things, but they don't do everything you guys would need. So frankly, a lot of these brokers are just outdated and they need to improve their integration and API capabilities. Does that make sense? So, so far so good on the, that end. Um, and we'll continue to add as many brokers as we can in the future. We just, we need to add brokers that would support what you guys need. So today we're going to be talking about, of course, the auto trading platform. And I call it really the big five or things, five things that we tried to accomplish or we did accomplish in building out this new auto trading platform. These were really kind of the five pain points that I feel like most people have with trading. The first thing is automation. So manual clunky process of trading is something that we completely wanted to eliminate. And we did through automated trading so that you can enter positions, exit positions, completely automated start to finish. We also built the platform with the idea of having, making sure that it was so fast and so secure and that the execution becomes so much faster than what you would normally do through manual trading so that you can essentially start running strategies from day one using bot templates, as we'll see, to start building strategies from day one. We integrated back testing and data to pretty much as much as we could through the new technology through back testing, through crowdsourced intelligence, so that you can get a frame of reference for what types of strategies you want to run, how you want to run those, what the strategy might look like generally moving forward in the future. Um, so the back testing thing is going to be a really popular one and, and seems to be a crowd favorite when we get on these you know, on these demos. The other thing that we did is number four, which is the one click cloning of strategies and templates really is truly one of the most unique things that we do always is a fan favorite for newbie traders. I think for a lot of professional or people who are more advanced traders, this is going to be something that you guys leverage, probably like not even what I expect in the future. You guys are going to take this to a whole nother level that I probably can't even see right now. Um, but I think that the ability to share templates and strategies in one click is truly revolutionary in this industry. And then finally, we want to make sure you guys had total control and visibility of everything that happens in your bots. So as I go through the demo today, you'll see that you have total control to see when a bot is making a trade, every decision it's making, nothing goes into a black box and then just comes out as a trade. You have total control to stop something, intervene with something, end it, turn it off, manually execute a portion of it if you want to. It really is uh, quite a unique platform that we built that gives you that type of control. Everything is 100% proprietary, built from the ground up, in-house, no third-party code. So we rebuilt this whole thing from the ground up, which is why it took so much time, frankly, to, to do it. We didn't start with any you know, code base or third-party code. We basically wrote every line of code ourselves. It's full stack control, which means that because we wrote everything, we have total control over it, and it's wicked fast. We built horizontal server architecture. So now I'm getting really geeked out with all this stuff. So if you geek out on some of this stuff, you know, you can add in the comments, you're like, that's cool, right? So horizontal server architecture basically is like what Netflix does where they allow people to scale up instantly. We can just spin up servers automatically and instantly to scale out and um, increase our capacity as quickly as needed. Everything runs 100% on AWS, which means that we've got 24 seven uptime, a lot of speed, reliability, all the best software platforms run on that. And most importantly, number five is the team that developed the platform are also traders, which is frankly a huge bonus because if you have an idea, if you have a suggestion, it's not that they just know how to code it in the platform. They also know why you want to do that, right? Like what's the use case? Why do you want to use Delta? Why do you want to use a trailing stop loss? They know what that is. And, and that's really important in this, I think, in this industry. We built everything for you. This whole platform was built with you at the center. And it's a way to learn, trade, and interact all in one place. So though we are going to spend most of our time on the auto trading technology today during the demo, please understand that this is the tip of the iceberg of what we've built. So the whole platform that'll be rolling out at the beginning of next year in stages is completely redone start to finish. And this is truly a platform that we re-engineered from start to finish to make sure that it all fit together really nicely to help support you and what you want to do in your trading. So things like certifications are going to be rolling out next year so that you can take quizzes and tests and get certified at different levels for trading. We've got a brand new digital encyclopedia we call the handbook 
that'll be rolling out. We hired two guys full time to just write this and build this out. Lots of graphs and images, things like what happens at dividend assignment? How do I roll a position? When do I exit a trade? How do I do that? Like all of these questions I know you have, we've spent months and months and months building out a resource for you. We've always got training and support. So we will never ever stop doing that. So even with auto trading in the future, when we continue to roll out new products, we will always have more and more training. We'll have written version, we'll have videos, we'll have demos and webinars. You'll never have a lack of training from Option Alpha, I can tell you that. We also do a bunch of office hours. So if you do join Elite, one of the cool things that we do in Elite is we do office hours. It's just a couple times a month, I open the doors essentially to a webinar, we get in, people just ask uh, just a ton of questions. And we just answer questions all day, you know, for an hour or two, whatever it takes to answer all your questions. This is a great opportunity if you just have a list of questions from the week to get them answered in office hours. We rebuilt the watch list. It's one of the tools that we'll demo here today. Helps you find new trading ideas and kind of organize your positions. I think you guys are really going to like the watch list. We completely rebuilt the back tester and we will continue to develop that. It's a way for you to run strategies before you actually put your hard-earned money at, at risk. This to me is one of the things, and I'll just say this for a second. This to me is one of the things that I just, I just, it, it blows my mind that people don't even just try to test a strategy before they start running it. Like they go into the market and they just throw up a bunch of positions and capital in the market and try something out where backtesting isn't perfect, but it allows you to see if you're kind of shooting or aiming in the right direction. Like, are you pointing north or are you pointing south, right? That's what the back tester does. And I can't wait to show it to you guys today on the demo. We've got some new tools that are be coming out in the future. We've built a forecaster. It's an AI powered sentiment and spread ranking tool. Just allows you the ability to start finding different trade ideas based on projections and where you think the market's going. We also have a journal that'll be rolling out in the future as well. The journal software is a way to automatically track positions and start to run that performance and analysis of your bots in your portfolio. It's a really cool tool that not a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have asked for, but usually you do it through Excel, right? Where you track your positions and what's your win rate. But this takes it to a whole nother level with automated tracking, plus the ability to, of course, interfere and interject and regroup and reassociate positions so that you can track them the way that you want to. It's a really cool tool. Everything was built around the community. The community is really the central hub of everything. The ability to share back tests, to share bots, to share trades in the future, to message with one another. We really focused so much of our time and attention on rebuilding the community so that you could interact with one another and help each other grow. And of course, everything kind of really is, you know, um, I guess you could say icing on the cake on top of bots, really, which are, are the uh, auto trading technology that we've built. So the question from here that I think a lot of people have, and you probably listen to this and you're like, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Can I really do this, right? Do you guys agree? You're like, what? kind of maybe a little bit overloaded, like you're drinking from a fire hose, right? I know, I get it. I've been, I've been there, I understand. The problem that I see in trading right now, and I'll be pretty clear and direct on this one, is that 95% of success in trading before this point was up to you. This is truly the problem with trading as I've seen it for many years which is that, and tell me if I'm right or wrong on this. If you wanted to trade a new strategy, you had to research that strategy, remember what to do, remember when to do it. Oh yeah, and then every day log in and actually do it. And if any of those things got derailed, then the strategy had an opportunity to fall apart. If you didn't remember when to take profits, if you didn't remember when to log in and what this indicator was and what the settings were for entry and exit, right? That's when strategies fall apart. And even if you remembered all of that and then you logged in, well, what happens when your emotions get in the way, right? What happens when it's, oh, well, it, this time's different, right? Because this thing is happening in the market. And so you start to interject and you start to let your emotions, you know, kind of run the, run the strategy every time you got forced to conflict with yourself to run the strategy. It's just, and it seemed like for such a long time that you had to have a skill to be a trader. And I totally agree that before this, it was a skill, right? Like you had to be good at it. You had to be a type of person that was consistent and, you know, as emotionless as possible. You had to have a skill but you don't have to do that anymore. You can offload the heavy, clunky, 
mundane process of running a strategy so that your brain power can be focused on the things that actually move the needle. So like, what do you think your brain is better at doing? Trying to do a clunky, consistent process all the time, the exact same way that's mundane, month in and month out? Or is your brain power better used at finding new strategies to trade and looking at new ideas and discovering new research on trading, right? That's where your brain power is most beneficial. And yet we spend all of our time sucked into our computers and our phones doing the manual process. Do you guys agree? That makes sense? Or how many times have you just said, I don't have the time? Be honest, right? How many times have you missed a trade? How many times have you forgot to check a position? You couldn't connect. Or more importantly, how many times have you sacrificed time with family and friends? I said this in an email a couple of weeks ago that I sent out to everyone. I will be totally honest with you guys. The one thing that I hate personally about myself as a trader is that I have such a connection to the market and want to trade so much that I have said multiple times to my poor children, sorry girls, dad has to make a couple trades real quick. And I freaking hate that. And if that is the only thing that motivates me to get out auto trading, that was probably the biggest thing. Because I hate going to my kids when they want to play and they want to do something. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, girls, like dad's got to make a couple trades, right? I hate that. And it shouldn't even be like that. But it's been like that forever. And that's why we wanted to build out something new. So you didn't have to do that. Right? So the question now is, if this is, seems logical, how come nobody thought of this? This is a question I've asked a million times to myself. And to, our, and to our team when we started out doing this, like for real, like nobody thought of this, nobody did this. Why didn't it, right? Like why, why didn't a broker come up with this? They've obviously could have done this. And here's why I think that they generally missed the ball because everyone was focused on zero commissions and whether right or wrong and zero commissions are great. Zero commissions are amazing. And I appreciate that, but they missed the ball because you know what's better than zero commissions? faster execution, and no time spend in, spent on the computer to execute strategies. Because how many times have you guys missed a trade and you missed the opportunity, say, to take a $100 profit and now you had to take a loss? Oh, but it's okay because you didn't pay a dollar in commissions. Like that logic to me never made sense. It never made sense to me that commission was the thing. Did it help to have lower commissions? For sure. But if you have terrible execution and poor management of a position, then better commissions doesn't do anything. Speed and execution trump better commissions all day, all night. Do you guys agree? That's why this is the next leg of this journey. That's why this is where the industry is going. So this is why technology broke down. All the brokers overshot your needs. All the brokers overshot your needs. How many new platforms have been developed in the last couple of years that did the exact same mechanics of manually entering trades? They just looked better, right? Do you guys agree? And like, I, you could probably name a bunch of them right now in the chat, right? New platforms that rolled out looked like different platforms, but effectively did the same thing, which is required you to place every trade yourself. Really didn't give you any new technology. So I think that automated trading is here and the opportunity is massive. And just like all disruptive technology, you can choose to embrace it and reap the benefits of being an early adopter, or I promise you, you're going to be chasing after it in the future. Now, this is where I will definitely say, I'll be as direct as I possibly can be here. You're going to auto trade at some point in the future. Many of you, if you choose not to be with us now and you choose to just completely reject this, I promise you, you will look back on this day and say, yep, Kirk told me this was coming because it's coming and everyone's going to auto trade in the future. Whether it's your whole portfolio or the majority of your portfolio, it is going to be the default standard. And so you can either choose to adopt it now, or you're going to chase after it in the future. And if you chase after it, it's going to be a blockbuster moment, right? It's going to be a blockbuster moment because what you, what blockbuster did when they saw Netflix coming, does anybody know? I've said this a couple of times in the demo. So if you do know, you can't cheat and, and put it in the comments, okay? 
But when Blockbuster saw Netflix coming, their answer was to put candy in the aisles. Like, are you serious? You've got this whole new technology coming and you thought candy was going to solve the problem. That's what I think people are going to do now. They're going to be like, oh, well, auto trading is coming, but I can still do this. No, no, no. It's coming. It's going to sweep through this entire industry and it's probably going to happen pretty fast. So the option's yours. And lucky for you, we made everything easy to automate. And it all surrounds bots. We think that bots are the future. So what is a bot? And this is where I want to spend a little bit of time talking through context, okay? Does that make sense? Everyone still good right here? Everyone good? You guys enjoying this? They get you pumped up. I mean, like, this is the beginning of it. I think that's what's so cool. It's like, you're not missing this. Like, it's not the ninth inning. Like, the field just opened. Like, the game hasn't even started yet, right? So cool. So what is a bot? A bot is just simply an automated trading strategy running inside your portfolio. I use a couple key words here, one of which being inside your portfolio. A bot doesn't have to run the whole portfolio. It could, but it doesn't have to if you don't want it to. But a bot is just a trading strategy running inside your portfolio, like an iron condor strategy or a VIX head strategy or a swing trading strategy or some other top secret strategy that you don't want us to know about. So bots are under your total control and follow the instructions you give it, which we simply call automations. You just tell the bot what to do. And you can run one bot or dozens of bots, as we'll show you here in a little bit. So here's how your portfolio could be structured. Now, again, this is not the end all be all. This is just to give you context. Notice that if this is your portfolio pie, you could have one bot that controls 40% of your account. And it's trading a very simple trend trading strategy. Buy stock above a trend, sell stock below a trend, right? Simple, easy to use. Then you could have some other bots that are trading some more complex strategies if you want to and have a smaller allocation. And then you could have even more bots that trade really rare. They don't need a lot of money to allocate. They're kind of one-off situations that happen now and then but they could be watching the markets for those unique opportunities all year long that might come up one or two times, right? Do you guys agree? When you get your elite membership at Option Alpha, you'll have a hundred bots to work with. It's truly overkill. You don't need a hundred bots necessarily, but if you wanted one bot for every 1% of your account trading a completely different little strategy, you could do that, right? You could do that if you want to. But does this concept make sense first? So for those of you who are here, does this visual help you understand that you could have bots doing different things, potentially wildly different things if you wanted to? Okay, good. So bots can run everything if you want them to. They don't have to. But all a bot needs to run is three things to get the job done. So I want you to dream for a little bit about all the things that you do now, the ways that you Find trades. You probably maybe even have a little short list, right? You have a little short list of things that you check and ways that you manage positions, right? You have a short list in your mind. But as you start thinking about how you could automate it, I need you to think in these three kind of circles or stages. You need to think in scanners and filters, strategies, and management. That's all a bot needs to run. And essentially what scanners and filters are, just tell it what to look for and what to filter out. So what am I looking for? What am I looking for? If I'm a bot and I'm coming to you, I'm like, hey, you tell me what to look for. Okay, you look for high implied volatility, this volume and these indicators being hit and you filter out anything that has earnings coming up or something that's in a downtrend. Now, these are not the only things you can do. We'll show you a bunch of examples here today, but. Do you get the idea that you just have to tell the bot what to look for and what to filter out? Once it finds an opportunity, it can execute a strategy. And sometimes it can execute a dynamic strategy. Today, we're gonna build out a bot called the Honey Badger. We're gonna build it out from scratch. It executes three different types of trades depending on three different market scenarios. Pretty cool. And then finally, you have to tell the bot what to do with management. How do I manage this position? And what everyone is used to so far is, well, you take profits at 50% or you exit at a 200% stop loss. 
but you can get very detailed with this. And we'll show you some examples where you tell the bot to manage, adjust. You could have the bot close and open a new position, hedge a position, take profits at certain time periods, right? Like 50% up until 15 days from expiration, then take a 25% profit. But any way that you want to manage the position, you just got to have it scripted out. How do you manage your position? Okay. Does that make sense? You starting to dream a little bit. Hopefully you guys are starting to dream a little bit. So now the question is, what is an automation? So automations are just the set of decisions you tell the bot to go through. Automations can run continuously on set schedules or when certain events happen. And we're going to demo all of these types today for you. So you'll see how these different ones work. But automations are just a set of instructions. Do this, then this, then this. Make this decision, then make this decision, then do this, right? That's all it's going to do. So as awesome as we think we are as humans, and we all think that we're pretty awesome, we know in our gut that we're highly inefficient at trade execution and position management on a consistent basis. Would you guys agree with that, right? We are highly inefficient at following our own rules that we, air finger quote, set up for ourselves right? We've all done this where we say, I'm going to take a profit at 50% and then a 50% profit comes and then we go, well, maybe it's different this time, right? We're bad at doing this. And we're bad at doing this because we can't multitask on these mundane activities all the time, right? Our brain tries to find shortcuts for doing these. So stop doing this. This is what most people's trading strategy looks like. I think mine is a combination of these as well. We all are, like we're guilty, all, all of us in manual trading of letting all of this interject, what we do. We do a little bit of wizardry. We try to be market wizards, try to forecast and believe that we have some divine connection with the market. Then we add a little bit of luck. Then we add some prayers and we pray to the trading gods or whoever we pray to that it works out. Then we add our crystal ball, right? We try to look at indicators and timing and this and that. And we think we've found you know, the perfect unicorn indicator. And then we have some gut opinion, right? Some hunch, right? <laughs> Don't lie. We've always been there, right? Like, oh, this thing always goes up after earnings, right? Or it always goes up after, you know, so-and-so tweets. And it usually ends pretty bad, right? Does that make sense? Right? <laughs> Someone's making jokes. That's good. But look, stop doing this, right? Stop doing this. Your trading strategy should look like this. I try to simplify this as much as possible, but follow me on this. You do your education. You learn what options are. That's always going to be an ongoing process. You can always do better. You can always learn more, myself included. I can always continue to learn deeper about things. Then you research strategies. This is the part that I don't think a lot of people do. Like use the tools and option alpha, as I'll show you, to begin the process of researching new ideas. It doesn't mean that it's going to you're going to find an exact idea that you want to trade, but you can try, you can use researching to filter out the things that you know are not going to work well for you. Then use your brain power to make logical, rational decisions. See, I think a lot of people think that bots are going to replace the ability to think. I think that bots are going to amplify the type of people who are great thinkers and traders and the type of people who just frankly are just going to wing it. But we're going to give you all the tools to do these components right here inside of Option Alpha so that you can make the best decision for yourself. And then you take the execution. You multiply all this by the execution of bots. You allow the bots to do the heavy, mundane, clunky process of executing a strategy, right? Well, let me ask you a question. How many people in here use automated bill pay? How many people in here use automated bill pay? I've never asked this question. Of course right? Everyone's like, of course I do, right? The reason you use automated bill pay is because you don't want to write checks anymore. You don't want to write checks and you don't want to write out the address and stamp it and mail it, whatever. You guys agree? Now you have to choose what you automate and what you don't. Like you choose what bills you have, right? The bill pay system doesn't choose what bills you have. The bill pay system just pays the bills it needs to pay. It's $20 this month, $30 next month. This month it's due on the first, next month it's due on the second. It does that process for you. Let me ask you another question. How many people in here drive an automatic car, right? The transmission in your car is automatic. 
when the automatic transition came or transmission came out, everyone drove the auto, everyone still does. A lot of people don't even know how to drive a stick. I do, and I'm proud of it. I do know how to drive a stick. But a lot of people don't drive a stick anymore because they don't need to. Now that the automated transmission is here, it can shift the gears for you. Right? That's what we're talking about here. It's just letting the bots do what they do best, which is just the execution and management. Does that help out? All right, so who's excited now? So after I did that, I've never done it like that where I talked about the manual transmission and bill pay, but it's something I think about all the time. Okay, you guys excited? You wanna see some bots? I'll take a sip of water. Yes, yes, yes. Bring it on. All right, good. So here's what we're gonna to cover today on the demo. First, we're gonna look at a simple stock trading bot. We're actually gonna build one out, okay? Again, if you are a wicked smart person, and you know you are if you're in here, you're a wicked smart person, you might get this really fast. We will progressively get more advanced with the bots that we build out. But I need to start with a small, simple bot first. I hope you guys understand that. We have to start with the small one and we will build on top of the logic and we'll get really, really crazy and advanced with them as we go, okay? The next one that we're gonna look at is a beginner option spread bot. And then we're gonna look at an advanced RSI bot. Then we're gonna look at a flash crash hedge bot. Then we're gonna build out from scratch a Honey Badger bot, just because I like the name Honey Badger. I don't even know, but I love the name Honey Badger. So I'm just gonna have one called the Honey Badger. We're gonna build out from scratch, start to finish. Okay. And then number six, we're going to go through bot templates and cloning, which if you're a beginner, if you're a beginner, this is what you're going to want to focus on is the ability to use templates and cloning as the starting point for how you can trade strategies. Number seven, we're going to go through the watch list and the back tester. Okay. Now remember, as we go through here, these are just some of the things you can do. I can't possibly demo every little thing today. I'll try to show you as much as I can but understand that the combinations and the you know, components you can group together have infinite flexibility and scale, okay? Have infinite flexibility and scale. And again, if you're a new trader, you are going to love, love, love the templates, okay? You're gonna love, love, love the templates. So let's join in here and let me share my screen and jump over to the bots. Okay, can you guys see my screen here? All good to go? All right, great. So the first one that we're going to build out, and see, you can have a list of bots, right? And you can have a hundred of these if you want to, right? And the elite level. The first one that we're going to look at is this macro trend with stocks. Now, this one already has some positions from the other demos, but inside of our automations, it's completely blank. So I basically scratched everything. I'm going to rebuild it with you here so you can see it from the beginning. But let me go over a couple things on the dashboard that I think are important. The first thing is, is that all bots have global settings. So the global settings up here allow you to rename it and call it anything you want. You can choose the icon and the color and kind of get personal with your bot if you want to. The first thing that you have to do is determine your allocation. Now this is really important. These set the stage for what the bot can and can't do. It's basically your way of controlling how much activity and how much capital this bot has access to. So in this case, we say, look, we've got $100,000 that this bot can trade. If you wanted to, you could put this down at like a dollar. Like it can have a dollar. I don't know how much it's going to find for a dollar, but it can have a dollar. You could say, I want to give it $100. You can make it as little as you want, okay? But in this case, we're just going to give it $100,000. So we'll add some more zeros to this because that's what it is. The second thing that we can do is we can limit the number of positions on a daily basis or in total. So this is really good. If you don't want the bot to enter a lot of positions per day, you can set those limits here. You can say, look, no more than two new positions opened in a day. Now it can close a bunch of positions, take profits, do whatever, but new positions that it adds, no more than two in a day. And then again, you can set the totals to say no more than seven in a day or seven in total. So you can get into two positions and two positions and two positions, but as soon as you have seven, stop. Now, again, you can reset these parameters. You can say, look, three per day. I'm gonna do eight positions in total. You can do whatever you want here, okay? You can set those parameters to be as specific as you want. So let's just keep it as what it is. 
Down here below, you can see the activity. You can see that how many times it's made decisions, new positions or closed positions that it's had today. You can see how many positions are currently open in the bot and then all the history of the older positions. What's really cool here, and this I'm gonna take one like sidestep from automation, is that what we built out is the ability to open and close positions manually in addition to automating. So you can do all manual trading right from option alpha, or you can do a hybrid version if you wanted to, where you open a position manually and auto close it. You can open a position automatically and manually close it. If we wanted to open a or close a position, we just click on it and we would just click close the position and it would close. If we want to open a position, we just click open a position and we open a position. So you can do any type of manual hybrid, you can run interference on it. And again, you have total control. Now in our case, earlier today at 1130, I opened a position and then a minute later I closed it manually, right? That's it, that's all I did. So here was the position down here, right? It was the IWM, I opened it this morning at 1131 and then closed it at 1132, that's it. I just opened it and closed it manually. Now again, you can automate everything inside of option alpha, but if you want to do manual trading, you can do it. Does that make sense? So this trend strategy that we want to build out has no automations in it right now. So here's what we're going to do. Let me talk to you high level on what I want this thing to do. All I want this simple bot to do is buy stock when the stock is over its moving average, uh, long-term moving average. And I want to sell stock when it dips under a long-term moving average. Does that seem fair and simple enough? Buy stock when the stock is over a moving average and sell stock when it's below a moving average. We all agree so far? Simple, easy to use. And by the way, it's just going to do it with stock. We're not going to do any crazy option strategies right now, just stock. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a scanner. Scanners give you the ability to constantly look for positions. Remember when we talked about earlier in the demo, we're going to want to look for new opportunities to get into the position. Okay? So here's how we're going to build it out. Now we can choose from a list of pre-built automations that we've saved, which is a cool little feature. You can save all your automations or you can build one out from scratch, okay? You can build one out from scratch. So we'll just build one out from scratch and we'll say Kirk's trend decision. That's it. And I can save it to my list of automations so that when I build this once, I never have to do it again. Never have to do it again. And then I just hit save. All automations start with a decision or a position. So this is really cool. You can start by opening a position right away. Maybe you know exactly what you want to do and you just want to open the position. Maybe you want to close a position as we'll see in kind of the management use of automations in the future too. But in this case, I want the bot to make a decision. Remember I said that my decision is going to be is the stock above a moving average or below it. Simple enough. And so I add some criteria to my decision framework. Now, this is the list of criteria that we have the ability to pick from. This is called our recipe list. This is not the end all be all of recipes. These are pretty easy for us to spin up. But you can basically add a ton of variation in here from this list of recipes. And notice it's all done with very natural language, right? very natural language. So natural like language use, like is the symbol above a certain price or below a certain price, right? That's what we're talking about here. So you can do it based on moving averages, prices, price increases, volume metrics, IV rank. You can cross-reference different moving averages against each other. You can say the symbol reports earnings in more or less than a certain period of time. You can run prob probability analysis right inside of here. You can also start filtering trades, which we'll show you here in a little bit. You can do positions themselves. You can check existing positions inside of the bot. This is what will be useful when we get to the management section where we can make decisions based on the existing position that it has. You can also cross-reference individual indicators and use an indicator on one symbol to cross-reference an indicator on another symbol. And we'll again start building all these out. In particular, we'll use some of these indicators when we get to the build out of the honey batcher. Okay. But again, this is not the end all be all list. If you have ideas, you can add them to the wish list and we'll continue to build them out. 
In this case, all we want to do this first time around is see if a symbol's price is above a long-term moving average. Now watch this for a second. You can type in the symbol manually like this, and you can just say IWM. In this case, I want to check IWM specifically. Or you can make this a dynamic field, and you can create an input. And this input makes this field a little bit dynamic. So I'll just say ticker symbol. And now this field is changeable anytime I reuse this automation anywhere I go. So now I'm gonna say whatever ticker I choose later, and I'll show you this in a second, the price is above or below or whatever it is, the 200 day moving average. Again, you can change it to be a different type of moving average. You wanna use an exponential versus a simple, but we just wanna use a simple in this case, okay? So this is my criteria. Is the ticker's price above the 200 day moving average or not? And once I hit save, it now starts to split the automation into two different directions. Is everyone following along so far? If the answer to this question is yes, it continues down the yes path. If the answer to this question is no, it continues down the no path. Now you don't have to fill these in. You can leave one of these empty and it'll just end. But in this case, we want to buy stock if the ticker is above its 200 day moving average, right? Do you guys agree? So if the answer to this question is yes, I wanna add an action. And in this case, I wanna open a position. I wanna open a long equity position. I can, again, manually type in the symbol or I can link it to that same ticker that I used before, right? I can link it to that same ticker, that same dynamic field. And I can tell it exactly how many shares to buy. I can say buy 50 shares or wait, no, don't buy 50 shares. Buy as many shares as I can for $500 of risk, okay? Buy as many shares as I can for $500 of risk. So in this case, I save, and this is my simple decision. When a stock is in an uptrend, I wanna buy long stock, right? That makes sense? If I wanna go in and edit this, I can add additional criteria here. What if I wanna say, I wanna make sure that the symbol I'm looking at, the ticker I'm looking at, reports earnings in more than or less than, or exactly, whatever it is, more than 60 days. Maybe you wanna filter by that. And you want both of these to be true in order for it to continue down the yes path. Do you notice how easy it is just to go in here and put all the criteria you want in and then let the bot make those decisions for you? What if you wanted to do a crossover of a moving average as well? So you wanted to say, okay, I want the ticker price to be above the 200 day moving average, but I also want the 50 day moving average to be above the 200 day moving average. That's a classic one that people like to use. So I want the 50 day moving average to be above the 200 day moving average. And I go through the dialogue here, the simple natural language and I save. So not only does the ticker price have to be above the 200, but the 50 day has to be above the 200. Both of these have to be true in order for me to continue down the yes path. Is that pretty cool? You guys liking this so far? Now, if the ticker is not above its moving averages and basically in a downtrend, I leave this blank. I leave this side of it blank and it does nothing. It doesn't enter a position. It just stops. It doesn't do anything until my criteria are met. So good so far? Everyone good? I know it can definitely get complicated fast, but it's just logic. It's just a build out of logic and how you think. By the way, you're doing all of this in your mind already. You're doing it in your mind already. You just have to get it out of your mind and get it into automation. And we can streamline this process with templates. So that's my trend decision. Now, now that I've built this out, guess what appears? It has a ticker field. It says, okay, Kirk, what ticker do you guys want to use this on? So let's say Apple and I save. Now it's waiting for it to scan. But what if I want to scan another position? Well, guess what? I just reuse my new trend decision and I just type in a different symbol, gold. Now I've got these scanners working for Apple and one for gold and I can add a bunch of these in here. And in the future, you can just add a watch list into the automation itself. We're building that out actively right now. Is that pretty cool? So you can just reuse these over and over and over and over again. 
That way you don't have to build it over and over and over again. Okay. So now what's going to happen is now it's going to enter all these positions, right? It's going to build out your little portfolio of positions. Now, what do you need? Anybody? You need a way to manage the position. What happens when you get into a position, right? Because now you've built out the scanners that are going to open a bunch of positions, but now you need to build out a way to manage them. So we add another automation called a monitor. And monitors do what they say. They monitor existing positions. Make sense? They're like little portfolio managers. And you can be very specific with it. You can say, hey, look, manage any position in the portfolio through this automation or only manage long equity positions. Anybody have kids in here? I've got three kids, right? I don't manage all of my kids' emotions exactly the same. One kid needs to be talked to differently than the other kid, right? If you've got kids, you understand this, right? You can't talk to your children exactly the same. You have to customize the way that you talk and communicate with them to fit their needs and who they are. In the same way, you can have the bots manage different types of strategies differently. Maybe iron condors are managed differently than long equity. Long equity is managed differently than credit spreads. So in this case, I say, look, any type I have, anytime I have a long equity position, run it through this set of automations. Now notice all of the ones that are incompatible will naturally get, uh, get highlighted out. It'll say like, basically like these ones are all scanners. These are all your automations that are used for management. The system is smart enough to know you've used these for management. So I'm going to use this one, which I built out before called the uptrend manager. And if I want to, I can go in here and edit it. And here's the framework for it. So follow me on this. The index price that we set, we just set a market index. The index price, we're checking to see if it's above its 200 day moving average. If the answer to that question is no, it closes our position. That's it, right? Remember I said this was really simple. You buy stock when it's above the moving averages, you sell it when it's below. And you can cross-reference your position to check an index, not necessarily its own price. You could do both if you wanted to. Check and see if it's above the index and if the stock price is above its 200 day, or you could just do one or the other. But in this case, all it does is it constantly watches to see if the market is in a downtrend and then it sells your stock position. And again, you can set your index price. You can say, we're going to use SPY as the index. So now that I've done that, that one monitor action manages every single one of our positions independently, right? It manages every single one of our positions independently. So if I go to our log, you can see every time that it runs, it's checking through to see what the index price is. It just goes through this decision. Now notice inside the log, you have complete clarity of every time that it runs and you have clarity on exactly what decisions are being made and what logic it's going through. So this is a very simple bot. This bot allows you just to buy stock when it's above a moving average and sell it when it's below a moving average. And that's it. Is that pretty cool? You guys good on this one so far? I know you guys are asking questions back and forth. By the way, if you have questions on like membership and access and all that, just save it to the end because we're going to get to all that. You're jumping ahead. And if you're focused on that, I want you to focus on this first. Okay. Yeah, the log records depend on how long you, how many, you know, different automations you have, but we keep them for a long, long time. That you'll be able to access. Okay. You guys good on this? Can we continue on to another more advanced one? Can we keep going to a more advanced one? Yes, yes, yes. There's like multiple hundreds of you in here right now. So if you want to continue, like, yeah, say, let's go. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. I want to keep a good pace, cadence. All right. So we're going to look at this one, which is trend following with spreads. This is trend following with spreads. At the highest level, what this one does is effectively the same thing as the last bot. So it's just using a trend indicator above a trend, below a trend, right? A moving average, but except it's trading credit spreads now. So now we're introducing a level of complexity. Instead of just buying stock, we're going to trade credit spreads. 
So this one has the availability to do 10 positions. It already has 10 positions open and working, right? And so if I go inside the automations, you can see I've got a lot more scanners and a lot more monitors, but let's break it down one by one. Inside of this particular trend decision, which I just call 200 day moving average trend decision, I check to see if the stock is again above its 200 day moving average. Just a simple one, we're building some complexity here. I do one simple check. And if the stock is above its 200 day moving average, I open a short put spread, which is a bullish option strategy. And notice I link the same ticker symbol. I say, I wanna use the 45 day to expiration, only the monthly contracts. So sell the closest to 45 days, only the monthlies. I wanna use the 30 strike delta on the short leg. Or if you have a specific strike that you always use, you can manually type that in too. Or I want to, and I want to use the 10 delta on the long leg, or you can change it and say, you know what? No, the five delta on the long leg. Again, you have a lot of control here to say, say sell two contracts or one contract or whatever you want, or sell as many contracts as $700 of risk would allow. So lots and lots of control. And we'll talk about pricing. You'll have all the normal pricing parameters like GTC and limit orders and a new one called smart pricing, which we're gonna talk about at the end. I'm gonna show you some slides on how smart pricing works. Okay, but we're actively adding it to the platform. So now you put this order in, or you put this dynamic pricing or a strategy in. Now, if the stock is above a moving average, you sell a short spread. That's it. What if the stock is below the moving average? Well, now in this case, we actually wanna do something different. We're not just trading stock anymore. We wanna trade an option strategy and we want to sell a short call spread 60 days from expiration. Notice I have two dynamic strategies built right into this one automation. Depending on where the market is and what the conditions are, I can do two different things inside of this bot. In this case, we wanna sell that short call spread 60 days from expiration, but I wanted to add one little thing before, because I, if I was doing this, I would be worried about earnings. If I'm trading something and it has earnings coming up, I want to maybe avoid trading through an earnings event. Anybody like raise your hand in here? Like you guys avoid trading through earnings events or maybe you make some different decisions around earnings. Well, guess what? You can add a set of criteria that says, hey, if the ticker reports earnings in more than 60 days, right? Check and see when it reports earnings. If it's more than 60 days out, which if the answer to that question is yes, okay, then go ahead and enter the short call spread. But if the ticker is within 60 days of earnings, I don't wanna do anything yet until, and it just keeps scanning all the time, until I'm within or far enough out from earnings that I'm past 60 days. So that's the type of logic that you can build in here right inside of your decision tree. You can start to build out, and again, this is a very simple model, we'll continue to get more advanced, but that type of logic is something that you cannot find any place else. No place, and not even close. But we do this intuitively, we do this in our mind. Now I just want you to get this out onto, onto technology, onto paper essentially, you know, onto trading, okay? So now what this decision does is it could enter a short put spread or a short call spread. You guys agree? So now we need two different monitor actions. We need a way to monitor short put spreads and short call spreads because we want to treat them differently. In this case, with our short call spreads, we say, look, bot, <laughs> you can yell at the bot if you want to, look, bot, anytime a short call spread is opened, run it through this decision called my call spread manager. Now watch this. This is fascinating. You can have a manager automation that runs every single short call spread through this decision framework all day long. It's just constantly eating market data and watching positions for you. The first thing that I do is I say, look, I want to see if the position's premium decreased by 30% since it was opened. Again, you can say, you know what, I want to see if it went down by 25%. Because remember, if we're selling a call spread, if the position premium goes down by 25%, that's a profit. We can buy it back at a profit. And you can also, if you wanted to, set up a stop loss order right here as well. You could say, if this happens or the position premium increases by 200%, now I don't believe in stop losses, I don't use them, but if you wanted to, you could do that here. 
You could just say, look, if the position premium increased by 200% since it was opened, if either of these two are true, if I have a profit or I reach my stop loss, close the position. Again, dynamic pricing and management of positions, nowhere else. Somebody asked, why don't you use stop losses? You gotta listen to the podcast on why we don't use stop losses. But if you wanted to, you could do that here. If you wanted to take this out, you say, you know what? I just wanna check for a profit. Boom, only check for a profit. Now, what if I never have a profit? Because it's gonna ask the market every day, all day, do I have a profit? Do I have a profit? Do I have a profit? Like constantly throughout the day. That's all it's doing is just continuously monitoring the position for you. If you never have a profit and the answer is always no, the next thing I wanna check is, am I five days from expiration? Seems logical, right? Do you guys do this where you log in, watch your position for a profit, and if you're five days from expiration, you have to first remember to log in and close the position if you don't have a profit, right? Now you can do that here. Just build that into your management style. In this case, you say, if I'm five days from expiration, or maybe you want to change this, you say, you know what? No, if I'm two days from expiration, close the position. And Tim was right. And then you forget sometimes if you do this manually to log in and do this. Or you could say, again, you could make it really dynamic here. You could say, if I'm two days from expiration or if the position has been open, you just link it to that position. If the position has been open for more than, let's say, 20 days, right? Like for whatever reason, you just, you don't want to hold positions longer than 20 days. So if either one of these are true, then close the position. Notice that you can partition and subdivide or collapse and compress decisions together. You can space them out like this, or you can group them in here. You can even thread decisions within decisions. Like you can thread these two decisions together and say, okay, I wanna see if the, uh, the underlying position, uh, whatever, the underlying position's price is above my long call strike. So if that's the case, and or the position's been open more than 20 days, okay, then close the position. You can go banana crazy with this stuff if you want to. You don't have to, you can use very simple ones, but you can go banana crazy with it. Is that pretty cool? So now we've got a complex set of management instructions just for the call spreads that we open. Do you envision maybe that you would manage put spreads slightly differently? I think so. So here's what we do with the put spreads. With the put spreads, we go through this framework, which is considerably more complex. When you look at it, when we actually go through this, you'll see it makes a lot of logical sense. But when you view this, you're like, whoa, that's a lot of decisions. So let's take it one step at a time. First thing that we want to do is we want to see if we have a 50% profit. Did the premium go down by 50%? And if we have a 50% profit, that's the first thing that we want to check and we close the position. Boom, done, out. But what if we're 15 days from expiration? If we're 15 days from expiration, I want to then check to see if I have a 25% profit. Okay, so really quick, how many people, raise your hands. You try to get a 50% profit or whatever profit target you have, but you're running short on time you're willing to take a smaller profit, right? Like at expiration or near expiration, it's not 50 or nothing. Sometimes right before expiration, you're like, you know what? I'll take a 25% profit here, right? We do that. Raise your hand. You can put the little hand up thing, right? So you can build that logic in here. You can build that step every couple days if you wanted to. At 15 days, look for 30%. At 10 days, look for 25%. At five days, look for 20%. And you can just build, build, build this logic out as much as you want. What if I'm not 15 days from expiration? I can also check to see if my position is getting challenged. And I can do it a couple different ways. I can check to see if the position's underlying price is below my long put. Now remember, we sold a put spread. So if the position is really, really, really challenged, if it's really, really, really challenged, 
maybe I want the bot to open a long SPY put and hedge this, this particular bot, hedge itself. Or maybe I want to, and you can do this too. You can say, you know what? I don't want it to do this. I want it to close its existing position. And I want it to open a new position, effectively roll the put spread to a new expiration period. And you just link it up there and you're like, you know what? Now go out to the newest 60 day to expiration contracts and do that. You can have it hedge the position by selling the opposing call spread if you want to. Notice you don't always have to do decisions. You can just link actions right next to each other. Close this, then open this, then open that, then close that. Whatever you want to do. Is that pretty cool? It's pretty amazing that you can do this now and you can just actually start to think about all the ways in which you would manage a position. And now if you're never challenged, you never had a profit and you're two days from expiration, close it. Now, when you go through this, even though it might look like a lot of steps, it's not that many things that you guys, it's not out of the realm of possibility of what you already do now. Would you agree? You're doing this in your mind, one version of this or some complex version of this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So now what's this thing doing all day? It, well, it's already got all of its positions opened, right? So all of these scanners are now waiting for a new position to open up, right? It's kind of like in pause mode, it's waiting to open new positions because it's already full. But inside the log, it's just watching all of your positions for you one by one. It's going through here and it's going, do I have a 50% profit? No. Do I expire in 15 days? No. Am I being challenged? No. Do I expire in two days? No. Okay, done. Whew, we can pause for a little bit. We'll do it all over again. And it does it all day, all every day of the week, if you wanted to, constantly, 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 constantly. Is that pretty cool? You guys like this so far? You want to get a little bit more complex? Okay, a little bit more complex, yeah? All right, let's go. Let's do an RSI bounce spot with spreads. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, now we're gonna replace one component that we looked at last time. Last time we did a trend and trading credit spreads. Now we're gonna trade credit spreads, but now the trigger for our trade is not gonna be a moving average. Now we're gonna use RSI. So now in here, we give the bot the ability, so check this out, we give the bot the ability to do, go uh, enter two new positions a day and 10 positions at total. Right now, it's only opened four of its 10. It is looking for an opportunity to get into positions. So inside the automations, we have this swing trading credit spread automation. And this is what it goes through. Now this one's gonna be fun. So follow me on this, because I know you guys are gonna love this. Every time I've ever shown somebody this, they go crazy because they think like, man, that's so, it's so intuitive the way that we structured it this way for filtering of trades. So here's what we want to do. We want to see if RSI is below 30 or above 70. Would you guys agree that's a pretty classic RSI reading? You can customize these if you want to, obviously. You can say, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do a seven-day RSI. I want to do a 14-day RSI right? You can customize these as much as you want to. In this case, we're just going to use a seven-day RSI, or you could use a CCI or a DX or a momentum or whatever you want to use, okay? So in this case, we're looking for seven-day RSI below 30. And if it's below 30, suggesting that the bot or that the ticker is oversold, we want to eventually sell a put spread. See, we want to sell this one 45-day to expiration put spread. But because I know you guys, and I know myself, I'm not just gonna openly sell a put spread. I'm gonna check some things. I'm gonna see if the put spread has good pricing, if there's good liquidity. Do you guys agree? What, I mean, what are the things that you check? You check liquidity, you check pricing, maybe you check the rate of return, maybe you check the bid ask spread, volume. Yeah, you could check a bunch of things, right? So what I did is I preceded this with a set of criteria. And the criteria are all opportunity filters. So think about it, the bot presents you with an opportunity. Yes, the ticker is below its seven day RSI value of 30. Great, filter 
my position to make sure that these criteria are true. And the criteria for filtering are right here under opportunities. And you can filter by a bunch of different criteria. In this case, we filtered to see if the short put spread that we're about to enter, and again, you just build out the, the basics of it. You go, look, look at this type of put spread, 45 days, 30 delta, 10 delta long leg, price that put spread for me bot and make sure that the rate of return is greater than 33%. How many people use the rule of thumb that you have to sell a spread for one third the width of the strikes? Anybody heard that? It's a popular Tastyworks one, Tasty Trade one, right? You gotta sell for one third the width of the strikes. Well, if you wanted to do that, which I don't agree with using that all the time, if you wanted to do that, you could just program it in here. You could say, only sell this spread if I'm collecting enough premium to capture a 33% return. That's bananas that you can do that. Now, how much time did I just save you? Because how many times have you calculated this out yourself? Have you looked at a spread and you're like, okay, the pricing on this spread is $125 to $5 of width, right? <laughs> like I, use, I do it too. I'm with you. Now you can put it in here and you can say, you know what? I want to collect 25% of the, of the premium, right? Yeah, somebody said spread shopping. That's right. So now you say, okay, first filter for me is it's got to be 33% of the width of the spread or whatever it is for you. We'll use that for this example. Next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the whole bid ass spread is less than seven cents because we don't want to trade anything that's got a wide spread. So we tell the bot to check the spread. We tell the bot to check the spread and say, look, it's got to be less than seven cents or less than six cents or less than eight cents or whatever that filter is for you. Oh yeah, and I want you to check the short put leg. Notice you can change it to be one part of it or not. The short put leg, check the open interest or the price or the gamma or the volume or the vega, the theta, the blah, 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 whatever you want. Check the open interest to make sure that it's greater than a thousand contracts. Is that pretty cool? So now in this one set of criteria that I've grouped together, this and this and this have to be true before I get into a position. That is bananas that you can do that now because all of that used to be you. That used to be you, you checking, you remembering what you wanted to do, you remembering what the spreads needed to be, you remembering what kind of bid ass spread to look for. That was you. That doesn't need to be you anymore. So now only if all of these are true, does it execute the position. Only if all of those are true, does it execute the position. So if RSI is below 30, great, but these also have to be true for me. Let's take the other side. What if RSI is not below 30? Now we wanna check and say, see if RSI is above 70. Now is the market overbought. And again, we want to eventually sell a short call spread 90 days from expiration or whatever it is. And now we want to filter for just one thing. Now I'm just using this as an example, by the way, just to show you that you can do multiple filters. You can do one filter. You don't have to do a filter. In this case, the short call spread is, is uh, the one that we're checking. So we're saying, look, check this short call spread and make sure that the premium we're collecting is 25% of the, of the width of the strikes. So is my rate of return 25%, right? And if that's the case, then enter the position. That's only when it would enter the position. Now, what this swing trading credit spread does is it doesn't do anything. Notice all the way over here, if RSI isn't below 30 and it's not above 70, it does nothing, it waits. It waits, it waits, it waits, it waits, right? So if I go into the logs now and you see what it's doing here today is it's running through these tickers. And if there's no opportunity to trade, it just waits and it scans it again later. So all day, every day, it's watching the markets for you, watching for an opportunity to get into a position only when RSI is overbought or oversold. 
How many times have you logged in and tried to watch this yourself? You are wasting your valuable and precious time doing this yourself. It's a complete waste of your time to do this when you can just offload that activity to this. So now inside the automations, we have all these things that are looking for different RSI over bought over sold levels. And now we could potentially get into a put spread or call spread, but guess what? Do we have to build out those put spread and call spread managers all over again from the last bot? Nope, we just reuse the exact same ones. So this bot reuses the exact same management style, the exact same automations because we built them out and saved them already. We don't need to rebuild them. We can reuse those management styles over and over and over again. Is that pretty cool? Now you can kind of piece things together if you want to. You can take one component of one and piece it together with another component of another. And yeah, you can build conditional management styles into all of it. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do the management. Okay, pretty cool. You guys wanna keep going? Let's look at a different style now. Okay, let's look at a different style now. Let's look at this one, which is our daily iron condor. Now this one's a little bit different. It's more of a simple strategy, but instead of constantly looking for positions, I did something a little bit different on this one. I did something a little bit different. All I did was I set up an event. So instead of having a scanner that's running constantly throughout the day, I set up an event. And I set up that event to run every day at 12 o'clock. That's it. Now, again, I'm not telling you how you should use these bots. I'm showing you the range and capability of how you can piece this together. So in this case, with this event, I said, look, I want this bot, this classic iron condor, which just makes a decision to sell one type of iron condor or not. It doesn't matter what it does. It's, it could be anything. It could be that trend decision. It's just running this automation and it's running it every day at 12 o'clock. Now, if I want to, I can change up this schedule and I can say run it every week actually on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday because I just frankly hate Wednesday and Friday for some reason and run it Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 12 o'clock, or no, 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 run it at 1.15 in the afternoon. Or I could say run it every two days at 11.15. So if you're a new trader and you don't want the bot to open or scan for positions all the time, you could say, look, run one iron condor every week to start. Just once a week, run an iron condor, get into a new iron condor position. If you want to, or you could say, run it every month on the fourth Thursday of the month, <laughs> whatever it is, right? You could build in that logic and you can set your schedule for your bots to run. Do you guys do this with bill pay, by the way? It's the same logic on bill pay, like pay my cable bill every month on the 31st versus pay my cable bill every 10 minutes. Okay, pretty cool. So you can use it based on events. And in this case, we then set up a monitor that just monitors our iron condors. Now watch this for the iron condors. Iron condors are a little bit different. The iron condors have two spreads. You've got a call spread and a put spread. So I can first check and see, I can first check and see if my iron condor went down in, down in value by 50%, i.e. a 50% profit, and then I can close the position. The next thing I can do, and this is so fascinating, you can check to see if the price of the security that it's trading, so if you're trading Apple, check Apple's price to see if Apple's price is above my short call strike or below my short put strike. Aha, that's pretty fascinating. Now you can check and see if you're getting challenged on either side of your position. Is the stock rallying against me? Is it falling, right? Check and see if I'm getting challenged. And if I am getting challenged, maybe I just wanna close the position. 
Maybe you want to do something different, but you could. And if I'm never challenged and I'm 10 days before expiration, okay, now check and see if I have a 25% profit. And if I am not 10 days from expiration, maybe I want to check now and see if the delta value on one of the legs is over 50. I might not be challenged with the price, but maybe the delta value is over. I, I don't know how you guys are going to put these together. I'm just showing you a bunch of different ways. You can group and organize these in whatever framework you want. And then close the position. So all this bot does every day at 12 o'clock, scroll back here to 12 o'clock, all it does all day at 12 o'clock is enter a position every day. If there's room in the portfolio, it enters a position. Okay, pretty cool. You guys like these? You wanna keep going? Yep. All right, let's keep going. And then we'll get to a bunch of questions. Okay, let's get through some of these bots and then we'll get to some questions. Let's look at this one. Let's look at the flash crash bot. If you didn't listen to my podcast on this bot, I'm going to re say a bunch of the things here, but it's important that you listen. I think that this type of bot is what has truly been missing for most traders. And I think that this is a good example of the types of micro strategy bots that you, me, everybody will be trading. I think that they're, that most people will have a couple bots that handle the big stuff, right? Just like when you do bill pay right now, you've got a couple bills that are the big bills, rent, mortgage, cars, whatever. But I think that the use of these micro strategies for very specific market scenarios is something that not a lot of people have thought about. So in this case, I set up this one called the flash crash hedge. Now I'm worried and I'm truly worried that there will be another flash crash in the future. And although I have no idea what that will look like, because we don't, I want to have something in place that could potentially hedge a flash crash. It may not do a perfect job. It may do an imperfect job, but I want something in place personally that does something versus nothing. Do you guys agree? So I've set some instructions for this bot. This bot gets $3,000 to work with and no more. It can enter one position and one position only, like one shot. It's got one bullet in the chamber, that's it. And the only automation that it runs is it runs a scanner called, is the market crashing? This is so I know what this scanner does. You can name it whatever you want. You can name it doomsday scanner. You can name it black swan scanner, whatever you want. In this case, I wanna check and see if the market's price is down 10% since yesterday. That's the first thing. If the market's price isn't down 10% since yesterday, I also wanted to check and see if the VIX is above 40 or, and or the SPY price is below 300. So if this is true, or if the combination of these two are true, notice you can change these and or statements. If this ends up creating a yes answer, this or the combination of these two, then I want to buy at the money SPY long puts with all the capital I've got available, right? All the capital available. Like if the market's crashing and I'm not there and I'm not, you know, I'm doing a demo with you guys, I'm not watching the market and it's crashing. I wanted to do something. Does that make sense? I just want to buy long puts right away. And that could happen again. I can also set up my management for it right here as well. So I can call this one, I call it the hedge profit taker. So as soon as it opens the position, now the bot kicks in and it starts to manage the position. And it starts to ask, do I have a 250% profit? Because that could happen fast, right? So the market could crash, it could open a position, and then I could have a profit, like all in the same 30 minutes, hour, right? It could happen that fast. And I still may not be anywhere near the markets or have access to it. So I check and see if I've got a 250% 250% profit. And if I do, I close the position. And if I don't, I want to also check and see if the VIX is below 40. Because now if the VIX is below 40, maybe I'm assured or maybe I have confidence that 
things aren't as crazy as they were and things are calming down. So in that case, just close the position, whatever profit or loss we have. So this is a self-sustaining bot that can hedge and exit dynamically in one place. Now, you may not use a bot that is exactly like this. You may not want to take 250% profit. You may want to take 100% profit or a 350% profit, or you might exit when the VIX is below 40. But I think people are going to use these very opportunistic, very strategic specialty bots all over their portfolio. This one will be running in mine all the time, and I hope it never enters a position. But God forbid that the market starts crashing, it's going to do something versus doing nothing. You guys like that? Pretty good? Cool idea? So let me take it one step further, especially if you've never seen this before, this will blow your mind. If I want to clone this bot and do it a little bit differently, right? I want to clone this bot and do it a little bit differently. I can go into my own bot and I can say, clone this bot. And I can say flash crash hedge bot, let's call it 5%. So I can make a clone of this. It reuses the same automations, but now maybe I want to allocate this one at, I don't know, 5% of my account or something like that, $5,000, whatever you want. You can clone this bot and replicate the entire framework and then change a couple little variables. That's cloning. Cloning gives you the ability to use the bot over and over again and the framework and then change some variables. Now, what if I don't like this clone? I'm like, okay, I don't like that clone. I just remove it and now it's gone. But what if I like using this type of structure? Actually, let me say this. What bot do you guys like the most today? Like of the ones that you saw, which ones do you like the most? The trend, RSI, do you like the flash crash one? The macro trend, the daily iron condor, okay, trend, crashy, all of them, flash crash by far, credit spread. Okay, so we'll stick with this one. All right, so check this out. So what this one does is it does, or let's do this. So we know cloning. Now we can use this as a template. So now let's say I want to share this with all of you guys right? Because you guys like this. So I'm going to save this as a template. And I'm going to say Kirk's flash crash hedge bot. And I'm going to save this as a template. And I'm going to put something here. Maybe some description of what it does. And I'm going to save this as a brand new template. Now templates are amazing because what templates do is they allow you to look inside of a bot and see what it does. Notice I can't change any of the fields anymore, but I can look inside of a bot and see what the variables are, how the strategy is run. Oh, okay, they take profits at 250%, et cetera. I can even add notes here and tell you how it works. And then what I can do is I can share this template with everybody. So inside of my templates here, I already did this one here. Here's the really full built out one. Here's all my notes, right? Here's when it takes profits, what happens, the idea behind it, whatever. I can go into the community and I can post this bot right in here. I'm going to do it right now. Kirk's flash crash hedge bot. Here it is. And I can attach this template to the entire community. And now guess what? Everyone can come in here and look at this template and they can clone it for themselves and create a copy. I don't know if I went through that too fast or whatever, but do you understand the power of being able to take this thing and take the template itself and clone it and then modify it to do whatever you want? So if I go back into the community, and I can either start a private discussion with people. By the way, you don't have to share it publicly. I'm going to share all my templates publicly. 
You don't have to share it publicly. You can share it in a private conversation with people. You can have a private combo with people and say, oh, I'm going to share this couple templates and you can trade templates back and forth. So in this case, let me go to this one because I've been using this one as a new example. But in this case, Jack added his template and his template is this RSI bounce bot. So when I go to this template, notice in my templates down the left-hand side, do you guys see I do not have one called RSI bounce bot? You see that? These are all the ones that I've saved. But this is one that Jack created. It was updated on August 10th. There's been eight clones of it. So eight people are using potentially some version of it out there. But now I can look inside of his strategy and I can see exactly what he does. Look, he also filters for, does the bot have more than one position open? And then he filters here for more than one position open. And let me see how he monitors this. Okay, he only closes it if, oh, well, that's a complex set of decisions. Man, so great that I didn't have to build these out. But what if I love everything about this except one variable? What if I loved everything about this except one variable? So now what I do, and this is the control. So I think Brian's in here. Oh, what's up, Brian? I know Brian Pasek. So what if you wanted to come in here, you clone this bot and you call it Kirk's RSI bounce. I put all the variables in here. Notice he's got some other inputs. So I say, just clone. Now I have Kirk's RSI bounce. I can go in here now and say, you know what? I like everything about this except this stupid 200 day moving average. I don't want to use that. I want to use a hundred day moving average. And I do that one clone. I've replicated the entire strategy and I've tweaked it to my own personal specifications. And then when I'm ready to go, I just turn it on. Is that pretty cool? I've taken an entire strategy, the base model of it. I can use it in full if I want to, I can use parts of it. I can delete this and say, you know what? I don't like the way he manages put spreads. I'm going to add my own put spread manager. I like the way he finds positions, but I have no, I don't like the way he manages positions. So I'm going to use my own put spread manager. Do you, do you see how like we can just, it's like Legos. You just like build like little bits and pieces together and then you run those. And now it's my own strategy. It's my own one. So inside the community now, the one that Jack shared, this template, if I like this framework so much, I can just save it to my templates. There you go. Now his template is right inside of mine. Now I can't control this template, right? I can't manipulate it or update it. It's his, but I've gotten the ability now to save it to my library of templates so that I can reference it whenever I want. Is that pretty cool? That's like the most amazing. I mean, look, I don't know what, how, like, is your mind blown? Like, is there like a mind blown emoji in here? For decades, this entire industry has been so backwards where if you wanted to learn a new strategy, you had to learn what they did. You had to attend a demo, watch a webinar, write it all down. Oh yeah. And remember to actually trade it exactly the same way. Now you just say, Hey, Share your template with me. Share your template. Okay, there is a mind blown one, right? Like you just say, share your template with me. So we will have a bunch of these templates for you to use, like a swing trading bot. Here's that swing trading one. I can just share this in the community, right? And you got to repick. Now, look, you got to repick your tickers. You got to confirm everything. You got to set your allocations, your positions. You got to turn it on. Like we're not going to auto turn it on, but here's how I'm going to use this in the future. I will be going out there looking at a ton of different bots that people share because you will, because there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who have already signed up for elite lifetime. All the bots that you share, I'm going to clone the ones that I like and I'm gonna run them as paper trading bots and see how they do. And the ones that I like that are paper trading, I can then turn into a real trading strategy at the snap of a finger. And that is the future of this entire industry. The ability to take things from idea to execution 
a thousand times faster than it ever was before. That is what's so cool about this. That is what's so cool about this. And if you don't like this anymore, right? Like you, you go in here and you're like, you know what? This template that Jack shared, this RSI one, I don't like it anymore. Get it out of there. I go back to my templates, it's gone. I don't have to follow it anymore. I can use, you can be a bot mooch. I've been saying this, like you can be a bot mooch. You can just come in and just clone a bunch of templates and nobody has to know that you're cloning a bunch of templates and you never share your own, right? You never share your own if you don't want to. And if you don't like a template, you just delete it out of your account and it's gone. Okay, is that pretty cool? You guys like this? You can delete your bots, save them, do whatever you want. I'm just doing a little cleanup myself. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more and let's do this one a little bit differently. So this one is gonna be the Honey Badger. So the Honey Badger is just a cool name, one. So that's why we're going to do it, but it has no automations, but I want to walk through this a little bit differently because this one's a little bit more complex. Okay. This one's a little bit more complex. So I'm going to switch over to the Thinkorswim platform just to give you some context as to how you're going to be doing this. Okay. Oh my gosh. The market is down pretty big today. See, I didn't even know. Nice. It's good. We're a little bit bearish in tilt. So that's good. Okay. So let me switch over here to FXI. Um, can you guys see my platform here and now? You guys see this? Okay, good. Now this is just an example to prove a point. Please do not email me after this and say, whoa, 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 you're using all these different indicators and what I, I'm just showing you an example that's a baseline scenario. And just to show you how we build it out and how you can put these things together. Is that fair? Okay. So we have FXI or whatever ticker you want. We have two different indicators down here. So the goal of the honey badger strategy is to sell put spreads when a stock is oversold, sell call spreads when a stock is overbought and trade iron condors when it's neither overbought or oversold. Pretty dynamic trading. Like when the stock is in a range or we expect it to be in a range, trade an iron condor. When it's at one extreme or the other, trade directional credit spreads. Okay. Somebody's like, love the honey badger already. So for example, where my cursor is right here, can you guys see this when I have my cursor here? I think last time somebody said they couldn't see it. Can you see it when I have my cursor here? with the line all the way up the chart. Notice that when CCI and RSI are both overbought, so on their higher end of the readings, that particular day right there, that's when we would have wanted to sell a credit call spread above the market. So if the CCI and RSI are both overbought, so follow me on this, if CCI and RSI are both overbought, then I would sell credit call spreads. If CCI and RSI are both oversold, like they are here, then I would sell credit put spreads. Does that make sense? And I would get directional only when it gets to an extreme. Everything in between, like where my cursor is right now, where CCI and RSI are neither overbought or oversold, I trade neutral iron condors, okay? I trade neutral iron condors. Is that pretty cool? Does that make sense, first of all? So most of the time you probably are trading neutral iron condors until it gets to one of these extremes. And when it gets to one of these extremes, then you do a directional trade. So that would be the framework of the honey badger, okay? So that's how I'm setting this up so you can understand the logic behind it as we go through, okay? So let me switch back to the bots now. So inside of the bots, we need to start with a scanner. We need to start scanning for something in the market. So we're gonna name this one, the honey badger. We're gonna save it to our list of automations so we can reuse it over and over again. 
the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to filter for the overbought or oversold. So we go down here and we say, is the symbol, and we're going to make a dynamic field here. We're going to say, we're going to choose what ticker we want later. Okay. We don't want to always hard code the ticker. We're going to choose what ticker we want later. Is the symbol, is the, I think we did the 14 day RSI. Is it above a value of 65? I think is what I had on the thing. That's the first filter. But I want both of these indicators to be flashing overbought at the same time. Does that make sense? So I'm going to add another indicator to check. I'll link up that same ticker. And this time I'll say I want the CCI reading, whoop, not CMO, CCI. I want that reading to be above 150. So both of these have to be true at the exact same time. If one is true and not the other, it doesn't work. I want both of these indicators to be flashing overbought. Is that pretty cool? Now I just save. So this is my first level of building the honey badger. Are we all following along on this really quick? I know you guys got a lot of questions in the chat, but I wanna make sure you follow along as we build this out because we're gonna get real complex with this. So if it's overbought, what do I want to do? If the market symbols are overbought, what do I want to do? I want to open a position. I want to sell a call spread, right? And I want to link it to that same ticker symbol. Maybe I want to do it 45 days, whatever it is, doesn't matter here. And I click save. So I want to sell a call spread, but oh crap, I forgot forgot, right? I want to check pricing on this. So I'm going to proceed this decision by filtering the opportunity itself. So I want to make sure that this short call spread I was about to trade, notice that it's smart enough to recognize what you were about to do. That that short call spread that I was about to trade, that the pricing on it is one third the width of the strikes. Oh, and I want to check and see if the bid ask spread on that same short call spread that I was about to trade, if the bid ask spread is less than eight cents, because I want to make sure that the spread's pretty tight. Notice how we're just building this logic right in here and I hit save. By the way, I'm going to create a template out of this so you guys can use it. So you just follow along. And if you're like, oh, I don't even want to build it out, I'll just take the template. So this is the logic here. If the market's overbought, then I want to eventually sell this short call spread and I want to chat, I want to filter it for perfect pricing and for liquidity. Pretty cool. What if CCI and RSI are not overbought? Well, now I want to check and see, are they oversold? So I just go down here and I say, I want this ticker. I want to check the 14 day RSI value. I want to see if it's below a value of, I think it was 35 that I had. And I want to see if CCI is below 150. So I go here and I say ticker. I want to check CCI and see if that value is below negative 150 because that's the readings on CCI. Is that pretty cool? Now you have that check. What if these are true? What if it's not overbought, but if it's oversold? Now, what do you want to do? Now you want to sell a short put spread. So you want to do a short put spread and you want to do it on the same ticker. Oh, but crap, that's right. I forgot. I want to filter this. So I proceed it with a decision to filter by some criteria. Maybe in this case, the only thing I care about, I'm just being a little bit different on how we do this, but maybe in this case, the only thing that I care about is that the short leg of my short put spread, my short put leg, the open interest is greater than 500 contracts. Maybe that's the only thing I care about. Now notice you can add a bunch of them in there if you wanted to. So that's how I filter it out. And then if this is true, then I would enter the position. So this honey badger now has two dynamic strategies. I've now completed 
the building out of one side or the other side, depending on an overbought, oversold. But remember, I wanted to trade iron condors if the market was range bound. So if this is not true, and this is not true, the no path is open a neutral iron condor position. Use the same ticker. Maybe I wanna do a dynamic spread where I do the 35 delta on the short put side or on the short call side, and I wanna do the 25 delta on the put side. You can get dynamic with this and specify each and every leg if you wanted to. So there you go. There's your whole honey badger right there. It is built out from start to finish to enter a completely dynamic trade based upon those indicators that we looked at on the thinkorswim chart. Is that pretty cool? So now I save this, that's my honey badger. And I run this on say GLD or whatever the case is. And because I have three different types of trades that could be opened, I just reuse all of those call spread, put spread managers that I've had before and other ones. So I say, anytime a short call spread is open, use that. Anytime a short put spread is opened. So where's my short put spreads? Use my put spread manager. Oh, that's right, I have an iron condor. Great, I'll watch iron condors completely differently too. I'll use my iron condor position manager. Now again, you don't have to be as specific with each position if you wanted to. You could have a monitor that's just called take 50% profit. And that's all it does, no matter what type of position it is but it allows you to be very, very specific with your positions, right? It allows your bots to be very, very specific with positions. And then I can do this. I can save it as a template and I can call it Kirk's Honey Badger, save. I go right into the community in this bot. I think I did it the other day, so I won't do it again, but it's right here, Kirk's Honey Badger. There, you can just go in and look at it, clone it, right? Build it out if you want to. I think I deleted that one. So here, I'll save it in here. Write a post. Here's my honey badger. And I attach the template. Here you go. And post. There you go. There it is. There you go, you can see exactly what it does. You can have total visibility in there. You choose to clone it or not. It was last updated today at 145. So if I go in and update it, you can track the updates and then you can start a little discussion on it in here. You can write a reply that's like, hey, this thing sucks. This thing's awesome, I like it. Or better yet, and this is what I think, I hope you do, modify it and add your template back to it. Say, hey, Kirk, I modified it because I also checked for this. Here's my template. That's the power of all of this stuff, right? That's the power of all of this stuff. Now, of course, when you go in here and clone this, it doesn't start right away. You have to set all the parameters. You gotta double check the tickers. You gotta use your pricing, your allocation. That's why you have to clone it and then start it yourself, right? Because you need to make sure that all the parameters fit. Like I said, I think what a lot of people should do is clone some templates and run them paper for a while and then start to use them. Does that answer that question? Is that pretty cool? Do you guys like this? Great, 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 great. All right, let me go through some Q and A. Um, let me do this. Do you guys wanna see the back tester? Let's do the back tester first and the watch list. Is that good? Can we do the back tester and the watch list? Yep. So the trick with the legal stuff, cause I see a lot of people asking questions on the legal side of it. The trick with the legal, not trick, but like every time that we show it to an attorney, lawyer, legal review, whatever, you have control over all the pricing and entry mechanics, right? So when you start with the template, you can turn on the template, but you have effectively by turning on the template said, yeah, I agree with all of these things. I re-put in my allocation. I re-put in my tickers, whatever. I have control over all of that. So it is a strategy that is always initiated by the end user. 
right? It's always initiated by the end user. Like we can't automatically start a strategy in your account. You would have had to agree that the fact that all of those things are true. That's why we can't ever scan a list of random tickers, right? Like you always would have to tell us what tickers go in there so that we're not arbitrarily making a selection for you because that we cannot ever do. Yep, great question. All right, so here's the back tester. If you've never seen the back tester before, you're going to love it. You're going to love the back tester, okay? One, you can back test your own strategies and they save to a very comfortable place called my back test. So you can see what tests you've run yourself. In this case, I've run a number of tests myself for the demo. This is one, excuse me, that I ran just a little bit ago, which was an EEM weekly iron condor. And you can go in and you can see the frequency and the entry conditions and the exit conditions, right? All the normal stuff you would expect, lots of granularity here on how you can do this. But one of the coolest things that you can do is you can test different capital allocations. I've, I've told people this for years, but like it never registered until we started doing this here. The exact same strategy run with different capital allocations produces wildly different results. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing that you can test those types of parameters. So in this case, you can test the exact same strategy using 2% of your capital per position or 5% per position with a max allocation of 30%. Like enter 5% every time I had a trading opportunity. But if I ever got into a situation where I was allocating more than 30% of the account, stop. Stop, 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 right? Or 5% with a max allocation of 15%. And notice it uses the same recipe framework that you're already used to in the bots. Just reuses that technology. So this weekly iron condor is the exact same strategy, except it has different allocations of capital. Notice it produced wildly different payoff diagrams. Now, some people might gravitate towards blue. Some people might gravitate towards orange or green. This is the beauty of using this. It allows you to see the performance at various levels so you can choose what's best for you. By the way, how many people like blue, green, or, or, or um, orange? Which one do you like the best? And I've, I've never asked anybody this, but I'm curious, like, what do you gravitate towards? Which one looks the best to you? So funny. Blue, orange, blue, orange, orange, green's more steady. I mean, it's all relative to like what you're actually testing, right? Blue, depend on the account, orange, green for large accounts, blue for the small ones. Yeah, it depends. I mean, but look, here's the thing, right? You can go in here and you can say, okay, this position had this return, this drawdown, this number of trades, this win streak, this whatever. Here was every single trade it made. Pretty clear. You go to this one, because you were allocating more capital, you might've had some different metrics. This win rate, this drawdown, this profit factor, and here are all the trades that it made. Notice it made a lot more contracts. It was highly, like you traded more frequency and more contracts, right? That's pretty cool. You go to this one, you can see all the different metrics. This is the beauty of doing this. This is the beauty of doing this is the ability to cross-reference multiple different ways to do something so you can find something that works for you. Do you guys agree? So like this one here, for example, this short call, I did this on purpose, but I did 50%, which blew up the portfolio, right? Versus 5% or 7%, which made money, but clearly didn't blow up the portfolio, nor did it make like a ton of money, but these are good strategies that you could start to use. Now, what if you don't even know what to do? What if you come in here the first day and you're like, I don't even know what to run. We have these two tabs called top back tests and discover. The top back tests takes the top back tests that anybody has run across the entire platform. So I run my own tests, you run your own tests. John, Joe, Jim, everybody runs their own tests. Carissa, and all of that data gets filtered into here. 
And now any test that anybody has run across the entire platform, you have access to. It's in the top test. So now you can look at it and you could go, you know what? I want the one that had one of the highest profit factors, pretty decent drawdown. Okay, what is this? And I click on it and now I can see what that test is. Now that had the highest metrics, but it only had 49 positions. Maybe I want to look at something different, but at least it starts the conversation. Does that make sense? By the way, your tests that you run, they're not specific to you. Like we privatize all of it, but it's not your account data. It's just a back test. So when you run a back test for yourself, we just use that data and the collective crowdsourced pot of intelligence that we can build to now start to do really cool things like find different strategy ideas that other people are running, right? In the discover tab, this is the coolest one. All credit goes to Rob who's in here. So you guys can all say, thanks, Rob. But the discover tab takes the highest metrics for all of these different types of metrics that we can track, right? And it takes those metrics to find the best one. Like if you said, you know what? I want the most winning trades, like just the one that had the most winning trades of anything. Or I want the one that had the highest win rate or the most consecutive winning trades. So check out this one. This one had, of anything that's been run in the platform so far, had the most consecutive winning trades. It had 217 winning trades. That's pretty cool. Now, it didn't make a lot. Like, the compound growth rate wasn't a lot. It didn't crush it. But if you want to add this type of strategy to your portfolio to improve the consistency of everything else, that would probably be a good idea right? This could easily be a strategy that is added to your portfolio just because of the sheer consistency of the strategy. That's where I think people are, are not, haven't yet thought about how to use backtesting. Like you can run these things by themselves if you want to, or use them as great resources for like, how do I add some consistency to my portfolio? Maybe I trade 5% of my account in this because for the most part, it's going to do really well. And so you ask yourself, okay, what did I, what did it do? It traded a short put spread, this Delta, that Delta, 90 days from expiration and took profits at 25%. Man, that's easy to set up with a bot. Now you just take this, create a bot and you're good to go or paper trade it or to turn this into a paper trading idea that you have. And now you can paper trade it. So you can go back and forth here and you can just, what was this? Like, you know, like what was this strategy? What was this strategy? Oh, let me see what, what one had the, the highest overall p &L with the fewest trades. <laughs> that was this, it was on Tesla. Now look, I don't know if Tesla is gonna continue, but that's what it was, it was this one. And it was 100% of your account. So I mean, like, look, you want to risk that? You knock your socks off. But at least you can see what other people are running. All right, let's get to some Q&A because I know you guys have questions. Is this good so far? Multiple broker accounts. Do we support multiple broker accounts? Yes. We'll support multiple broker integrations under the same account. You can have multiple sub-accounts. Think about like your checking account when you integrate with like Mint or whatever, you can have a login for Thinkorswim. And then if you have sub accounts in your login, like an IRA and a margin account, you can trade a bot in each of those, right? You could have a login for Thinkorswim and for TradeStation. You just can't have two separate logins for Thinkorswim. They all have to be, all the accounts have to be under the one login. Okay, all accounts have to be under the one login. Is futures or Forex trading supported? Not yet. And it's really because most broker APIs don't support it. So in the future, no pun intended, should this change, we can think about opening up futures trading, but it's not on the immediate roadmap because we have no clarity on if brokers are gonna support it in the future through their APIs. Same thing with crypto. Yeah, crypto is a big one. A lot of people have asked about crypto. 
It's not supported through broker APIs. Most brokers don't do it right now, the big ones. Um, if they do in the future, then we can look into it. How much control do I have? Well, hopefully you saw you have a lot of control over trades that are made. You tell the bot where and when and what to do through the automations. And you can always run interference. Remember we showed you in the beginning, you can pause a bot, stop a bot. You can trade out of sequence, close a position manually, manually open a position, right? Will there be a library of templates? Yes, there'll be a library of templates that you can choose to start with. And just like everything that we built, it's all interconnected. So you can choose to share templates publicly or privately, reuse strategies, mix and match, build them like little Legos back to back. Can bots run multiple automations? Yeah, you can choose to run multiple automations within each bot. You could have an RSI scanner, a CCI scanner, a MACD scanner, a Bollinger Band scanner, all running in the same bot because maybe you just want to trade anything that's overbought or oversold or whatever. Does the platform run on live data feeds? Yes, we buy our own data feed from the same source as the brokers. So we have our own data feed, which means you don't need a broker connection to use Option Alpha. We run our own paper trading engine, which means you don't need a broker to run paper trading. You could, if you don't have your broker integrated yet, or even ever in the future, you could still use paper trading bots on Option Alpha and get notified via email when there's a trade alert. Right? If you never have a broker that would integrate with Option Alpha, do you think that there's still a lot of value in this whole thing through back testing? cloning bots, running bots in paper to see what works, then even if you still had to manually trade, there's still so much value, I believe, in just having the other tools available. Can the bots scan a list of tickers? Almost. We're working on a new solution called the repeater, which is literally based on feedback that came out of this demo weeks ago. Right? that's out of the demo that came up weeks ago, people are like, can we just like scan it right inside? And we had thought about it a different way, but now we're gonna give you the ability to use a repeating function, like repeat this step on this, 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 and this ticker. Now you're gonna have to tell us what tickers they are for compliance. Like you can't say, hey, option alpha, scan every stock in the universe. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's a legal nightmare. Cause then we trade something and you're like, I didn't tell you to trade that thing, right? So you just have to, tell us what tickers you want to scan. But once you do it once, it's in and done, and then you're good. Can I filter trading opportunities? Yep. We showed you this in the demo, but you can filter trades before the orders get submitted. So for example, if you want to enter a short put spread, you could say filter it for only potential profits of greater than 30% and bid ask spreads of less than 5 cents. Again, I just don't know where else you can't do this anyplace else. I have been dreaming of doing this for years. Yeah, so cool. Do I have control over the pricing? Yes. You'll have the standard order types like GTC, limit orders, et cetera, as well as a new automated pricing feature called smart pricing. And here's how it works. You guys ready for this? Stop all the comments in here for a second. Check this out. When you learn about smart pricing, you will never, ever, ever use anything else. I would envision. I would envision. Okay. Let me ask you a question really quick for the couple hundred of you who are still here. There's multiple hundreds of you still here. If you had a bid ask spread of 260 to 270, where do you place your order? Where do you place your order? 260 to 270. Where do you place your order? Right, exactly. Everyone said exactly what I thought they would say. And that's exactly what I would do. I would place it at 265, mid price. Somewhere around 265, 266, 267, right? 
<laughs> right. This is exactly what I thought everyone would say. A very classic answer. By the way, not a wrong answer. That's what we're conditioned to do. Would you guys agree? We're conditioned for mid price. So check this out. This is ridiculous. Smart pricing works off of a couple variables that you guys set. And we'll have some set ones that you can use. But what it does is that it fires orders in rapid succession based on intervals and price differences. And you can set the tolerance of these things in there. So you can say, look, work through 60% of the spread width and do three cent increments every 10 seconds. So place an order that says, try at 250. If that doesn't work after 10 seconds, try at 253. If that doesn't work after 10 seconds, try at 256. Boom, the order got filled. But if that didn't work, it would try at 259 and then it would max try at 262. Right? This is how speed and execution trumps cheap commissions all day, all night. All day, all night. And on the weekends and holidays. Because everyone was going to say mid price. Everyone was going to say mid price, but I bet we'll be able to get at least the opportunity to fill at better prices, right? That is incredible. Now that's getting into the spread. So what happens when you try to do it the opposite way? Well, it works in the same, just in reverse, depending on what side you're in. And notice you can do different increments in different levels. You can say, okay, still do 60% of the spread width and still do three penny increments, but do it every 30 seconds. Right? So you're going to max go to 60% of the spread width. So the, you want to sell at the highest price, but you'd be willing to accept 258. So now you say every 30 seconds, which is different than every three seconds here, or every 10 seconds here, every 30 seconds, do a three cent drop. I mean, wow. So it tries at 270, tries at 267, tries at 264, boom, filled. You guys would have all defaulted to 260. And if you got filled immediately, there was a better price available. Oh, but don't, don't worry, guys. Remember, you paid no commission. That is a $4 scalp right there. Oh, but don't worry. You, did, you paid the, you didn't, you saved 50 cents in commissions, right? This is what I've been trying to tell people for years. Like commissions are great. Commissions are amazing. But man, speed and execution and the ability to just use smart pricing for everything, for everything changes the whole game. You guys, you girls, whoever. Yeah. Does that not change it? So when you guys see this now, who on earth wants to use just limit order pricing anymore? Like, why would you do that when you know it can, it can work towards limit order to the mid price? It can work towards that. But for God's sakes, like, why not try other prices? And it'll keep changing prices. It'll keep monitoring this spread width and keep trying different pricing intervals to at least try to fill at better prices instead of just going, oh, well, we'll just fill at the mid. <laughs> right? That's what you guys do. But if you want to do limit pricing, it'll be there. But this is why I've been telling people forever. Once you have smart pricing, you won't want to do anything else. And maybe some strategies, you use an aggressive version of smart pricing. Maybe some strategies, you use a conservative version of smart pricing. Right? When you get into, into a trade, you want to be really conservative and very, you want to take your time. Maybe when you get out, you're willing to do faster increments, three seconds apart, right? You just want to boom, boom, boom out as soon as I hit that, that threshold. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I, I personally believe the ability to use smart pricing pays for the whole thing. 
Like over time, this will pay for the whole thing. That's my belief. Speed and execution and just even trying these orders, even if you get partial fills, I think you end up with a better outcome than if you just defaulted to what you do now. Right? Okay. Was that good? By the way, this is the first time I've ever, ever, ever talked about smart pricing. You guys are literally the first if you're on here right now. That's pretty cool. Okay, let me make sure I can get these slides going again. I don't know why it's not doing that. There we go. Hello, smart pricing. There we go. Can bots manage adjustments? Dave, Devin said, or David said, I can verify that. Was here a few weeks ago and he didn't talk about smart pricing. Yeah, legit. That's the first time I've talked about it because I had to wait for those graphics. Can bots manage adjustments? Yes, as long as you define the triggers and trades for adjustments. For example, if you sell a short put spread, you can automatically sell a call spread when the short strike is challenged and convert the position into an iron butterfly. But you just have to define those parameters. You have to define those parameters. Next question. How often are automations running? This is a big one. Right now, which doesn't mean I can't change in the future, we can obviously, and we have plans to make it more efficient, but right now automations run every 15 minutes throughout the day at the elite level. That is way more than what 99% of you need. Not only because pricing is really erratic during the day, but you just don't trade strategies that would require that level of monitoring. But if you are a high frequency trader or a day trader, you want faster scans, shorter intervals, as low as a minute, like run my decisions every minute, that creates a massive load on a server because it's running a hundred bots, who knows how many scans, how many decisions, who basically have to spin up a server essentially for you. And that creates a load. And all we're gonna ask is that if you power up a bot, it'll cost a couple bucks a month to do that. And when I say a couple bucks, I mean a couple bucks. I don't mean 20s, 30s, 40s, I mean a couple dollars. And I think it's more than reasonable. We wanna give you an outlet that you can do that but it's just not required for everybody. That's like a ludicrous mode feature. Does that make sense? To be clear, if you don't upgrade to the elite level, which has the fastest scans and all of this functionality built into it, and you choose to go into an entry level plan in the future, because we're gonna have like a really low plan, like a plus membership, you get like one or two bots, those scans will be an hour we're definitely not going to allow entry level, lower level plans to have access to everything like a hundred bots and 15 minute scans. It's just not feasible. Does that make sense? Can I paper trade bots to test them? Yes, we built our own paper trading engine. So anyone regardless of if you're connected to a broker or not can paper trade bots for testing. Additionally, if your broker is not supported, why don't you leverage paper trading, clone bots, look at other templates, get ideas, run back tests, right? You can do so much else besides just auto trading and then have the paper trading bots send you alerts. Can I code my own trading strategy? Not currently. If you have an idea or suggestion or a wish, just ask. Add it to our wish list, optionalpha.com slash wish list. We're constantly pushing new updates, new ideas that have come out of the demo from listening to what you guys say in the comments and hearing your suggestions. I promise you our platform is not a standstill stagnant thing. It is going to be a constantly evolving thing. You guys have ideas on how to do it? Great, if we can support it and we can build it out, we'll just build it out and update the platform. 
in the future, I think we will open up the ability to push data in from outside sources. And I think this is going to be a huge component of what the future of trading will be, where you can cross-reference data that comes in from, say, stock tweets, sentiment data, and trade off of that data from a third-party source. Now, obviously, I can't control their pricing. So like if they charge you $5 a month to access their data, like I don't have any control over that. But the ability to trade off of third-party data coming in, that's incredible. That's incredible. Can I choose to keep bots private? Absolutely. Private is always the default setting for everything. You alone have the control over sharing or alternatively not sharing. If you want to keep everything private, you don't ever want to share a template, you don't ever want to share strategies, ideas, you never want to comment on anything, fine, do that. That's fine, for sure. So really quickly, stop what you're doing here because I want to go through this and then we can finish up with some more Q&A and, and all that stuff and go through the, the timeline, okay? Now that you guys have seen what you saw today, if you could automate one component, one strategy, one thing you're doing, even just using smart pricing, how would that change everything moving forward? Or maybe you discovered a strategy that you couldn't, you didn't even know existed before. Now, here's the tough question. I, and I, I say, again, I'll said this earlier, but I'll be as mo the most direct I can be right now. If you didn't automate your strategies, but everyone else started to, what happens? Because it's coming. Automation, that's here now. It's going to sweep through this entire industry. Now that I've shown publicly smart pricing, that's going to be the new default for how pricing works. And it's not just like, I believe it, like it's the truth. You guys tell me that I'm wrong, that that is not the default. Now that you have the ability to do that, why would you do anything other than use smart pricing? Because even if you couldn't get a better price, at least you should try in five or six orders back to back, right? That is crazy. So when that becomes the default standard, if you're not caught up with that, what happens? So here's the decision. If you want to stay on your current path, you want to hustle, do everything manual, you want to never choose automated trading, and you still want to trade options, I promise I'll be here to support you. Option Alpha will never stop putting out free education, training, putting out as much research as we can, supporting traders, whether they want to manually trade or not. We will never stop doing that. But I think as long as you commit to auto trading, whether you sign up today or not, it doesn't just commit to the fact that auto trading is going to be the future of this industry. And you have this amazing new tool right in front of you that can simplify and streamline your process. You just have to get out of your own way and stop drifting. I'm not here to tell you that auto trading will make things simpler for choosing strategies. I think for many people that auto trading will require you to do things that you didn't do before, like actually think about your trading strategy and the steps and the sequence of decisions that you make. I don't think people think about that. I think most people are shoot from the hip kind of traders. And so, yeah, auto trading is going to be a tougher because it's going to make you have to put this down, like make you have to walk through the process and logically think about it. But I believe that that is where you're Brain power is best use, best used. So I sent this out in the email this weekend, but this is the path that people are on. You're either drifting and you know it, or you're on an upward momentary momentum trajectory. And I think that what people think is that they have to come in here. I think, think most people assume they got to come in here and create a hundred bots and like let them all go loose. That's not the way to think about this. You should come in and when you get access, run a back test. Forget run a back test. That's a bad example too. Look at a back test. Like put one foot in front of another. 
And you're either going to start that upward stair step trajectory, that momentum path, or you're going to do this. And I know you because I do it so like I, I do it too, where it's like, how many people have you started a diet, right? Or like a health plan, or you said you're going to be good at this. And then you go, I'll do it later. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it's too much to remember. I won't do it. And then just, I don't have time, right? You're in drifting mode or you're building momentum. But the longer you wait, the wider that gap becomes. Because if you put this off and then in three months, you're like, well, I'll check out that auto trading thing now. You're going to feel like you're behind and you may talk yourself out of it. You may talk yourself out of it. So the reality is, is that disruptive technology like this doesn't change what needs to be done. Hear me on this, please. Cause I, I want to make sure you guys understand this. this is such a critical, like, component of this. Option alpha is not changing what needs to be done. We're not changing the fact that you need to trade. We're not changing the strategies that are available. We're not changing the indicators you use. We are just streamlining the process for you. If you think about what Netflix did to Blockbuster, did Netflix change the fact that we watch movies? No. We still love to watch movies. But now Netflix streamlined the process. We don't have to get into our car, go to the store, see if the movie is available, rewind the tape on the counter. <laughs> I remember doing all that, okay? We don't have to do that anymore. When you look at CDs and the iPod and the iPhone, did it change the fact that we listen to music? No. But here's what it did change. This is the craziest one. I talked about this one before, but I'm gonna harp on it here. When you, back in the day, if you were old enough to remember, you burn CDs or, or copied cassette tapes and shared them with your friends, right? Do you guys do that? Tell me I'm not the only one, right? I would burn a CD and I would share it with a friend or I would burn a cassette tape or I would sit there waiting on the radio for my song to play to hit record on the cassette tape. I did that too. That's how you would share music with each other. Then the iPod came along and the iPhone, and we share a playlist in a couple clicks of, a, of our finger, a couple taps of our thumb. We share an entire playlist with our friends. Or we discover, do you guys see the similarities now? We discover new playlists that are out there. I mean, what do you think we've been building at Option Alpha this whole time? We're just rerunning the playbook in a completely different industry. We're giving you the ability to discover strategies, to share templates with one another, and then edit and manipulate the templates to fit your own personal style. Like it is not rocket science what we've created. It's just that nobody did it before us. Is that cool? Does that make sense? It's fat. It actually like it gives me chills. Money transfers. You used to have to walk in and do a money transfer. Now you do it on your phone. Fiat money, you used to have to pay for something with physical cash. That's becoming more of a thing of the past. So this is what disruptive technology does is it changes the way we do things. It streamlines the process. So let's chat about the launch and then we can end with some Q&A. Is that fair? So the launch timeline, we open up the wait list in September. We're starting early access. I think the first couple of people are going to get rolled out here this week. The way that early access works, just so you know, the way that early access works is we are randomly rolling out the access in small groups to start, and we will sequentially get larger and larger with those groups. So when you sign up right now, if you go to optionalpha.com slash lifetime and sign up right now, like DW just did in the chat, you are not going to get access right away. That's why we're doing lifetime pricing because there's no monthly access, there's no monthly payment after this. We will give the first group of like 10 or 20 people access, make sure they're good, then give the next group of say 50 people access, then the next group of say 100, 200, then 400, 500, 1,000, 2,000 at a time. Does that make sense? We will work in sequentially larger groups. And we're doing this because I want to make sure that we can support every person who comes in with anything that we haven't caught yet in so much testing and bugging of everything or a way that you wanted to do it that we just didn't think of yet. 
And frankly, that's the right way to do software launch. That's why between now and October and February 1st, I'm spending all of my time with elite lifetime members, right? Like this is the, the focus is making sure you guys are the only ones that have access in there. On February 1st, we publicly open the doors to anybody. So before then, it's only elite lifetime members. Whenever your name comes up in rotation, we'll give you an email and give you access. Does that make sense? Is that cool? On November 1st, which is this Saturday, so October 31st at midnight Eastern Standard Time, because I'm getting this on recording because I know someone's going to email me afterwards and say, I did not hear you say it was Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time, October 31st at midnight, the second that it clocks over to November 1st, lifetime price goes up $500. We've had a long period here of about two and a half months that we've announced this. It's been years that we told everyone it was coming. It's got to, it's, we have to transition and we cannot offer lifetime at these prices anymore. On December 1st, lifetime goes away completely. So from November 1st to December 1st, you can still join. It's a little bit more expensive but it goes away completely. And after December 1st, the only way to have access to the platform is gonna be through a monthly reoccurring membership at whatever level you're at. Plus, pro, elite, et cetera. After December 1st, or February 1st, the roadmap looks like this. We're gonna to continue to roll out new broker integrations as fast as possible. That's even before February 1st. Whatever we can get done, we'll roll out. We'll start adding more data integrations with third-party data providers, right? The stock tweet sentiment data, TTM squeeze, we hope to get in there too. We'll roll out our AI forecasting tool. We'll roll out the journal software. We'll develop a mobile app. We want to make sure the desktop one is working well, and then we'll start to work on the mobile app, okay? So there's lots of things that we have planned in the future. This is not it. And all of those are included in Lifetime. And we'll talk about what's not included in lifetime, but like, for example, data integrations. If a third party data provider that you want to trade with charges you $10 to access their data and we can connect to their platform, of course, I can't cover their $10 fee. That's their fee that they charge you. Does that make sense? Seems rational, but I know people are going to ask. They're going to be like, I thought it included everything, but I, if you pay them $10 to access data and you want to use that, we'll give you the ability to use it but we can't cover that cost. Does that make sense? Just want to be uber ultra transparent with how this works. Again, with the brokers, we have Thinkorswim, which is our active integration. We've got signed agreements with TradeStation and Tradier. We are in the process with uh, Tastyworks. We do not have a signed agreement with them. I saw one comment fly by here. I don't think it was appropriate. I'm gonna call it out right now. Like somebody said that they thought it was completely unprofessional that I had Tastyworks on here. I am being so ultra transparent in saying we do not have an agreement with Tastyworks. We are very optimistic that we will have one. But at this moment in time, we do not have that agreement. You can do as much pushing as you can do on your end, which is help us out, email them, tell them you want the agreement, tell them you want the connection. That helps us out tremendously. But nowhere did I ever say that we had the agreement and it was done and in place. Right? Nowhere did I say that it was done and in place. So I don't appreciate if people are saying that we put this up here like it's done. It's not, it's in a whole different category I'm talking about differently. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. Ones that we do not support, i.e. the red category here. E-Trade Interactive Brokers Robinhood Fidelity. For one reason or another, they either do not have a way to integrate, there's no way we can connect the plugs through an API, or their APIs are outdated. Look, you guys have seen this by now, you see that this technology is new, different, advanced. Some of these brokers have legacy platforms. 
It's like we're trying to develop an iPod and they want us to be able to stick a CD in. Like, I'm sorry, but we just can't support that kind of connection anymore. And frankly, if we did, you guys would all be ticked at us because we had so many limitations, it would be unusable. Speaking of Schwab, Schwab, by the way, bought Thinkorswim. They've said publicly that everybody who has a Schwab account will have access to Thinkorswim and be able to use it. And what they've told us and the conversations we've had with them directly is that it will work like it normally does. They're going to keep everything the same. It's just at some point, if you're a Schwab customer, you'll have access to Thinkorswim. But they don't know when that rollout will be because the merger and the transition of those accounts could take a while. So if you're a Schwab customer, they've said you're going to have access to Thinkorswim. They've told us that too. They publicly posted that, that everyone's going to have access but they don't know when that timeline is. Okay. So that's the lifetime promotion. Right now, it's essentially two grand. I know it's a lot. I'm not saying it's not a lot by any stretch, but it's worth that much. And then some, I think. You'll get early access to auto trading. It is at the highest level we offer, which is elite. Let me again be clear on this, what's not included here. And I know people are gonna ask this in the future, that's why I'm getting it on recording on video and I've done this every time, okay? There are three things not included in Elite Lifetime. Three things. One, live events. We will have live events whenever the world opens back up. And I want to, desperately. I want to get in rooms with you guys and have bought boot camps and bought building camps and bought whatevers. I can't cover the cost of the hotel and whatever ourselves. So like when we do a live event, if it's 200 bucks to help us cover the cost of the hotel and the space, that's what we'll do. We will never make money from those live events. Like we'll never be an event company that does live events to make money. We're just going to do them at cost so that we can get you all together in a room. Does that sound fair? And I can't, that's not included in Elite Lifetime. Second thing is third-party data feeds. If you connect to a third-party data provider and they charge you $10 a month to get access to their data, we might allow you to use that data to make trade decisions, but if they charge you a fee for that data, I can't cover that fee. I think it's more than reasonable, but I just wanna make sure. Third thing is, if you do the power up to a bot, if you wanna go ludicrous mode, one minute scans, ridiculous like intervals on stuff that creates a server load that we're just going to say, look, just help us cover the cost of the server load, a couple bucks a month, right? That seems more than reasonable. A lot of developers, a lot of engineers would say, yeah, that's reasonable. And I think if you're doing one minute scans, like you have a strategy, hopefully that requires that and is profitable enough to cover the couple dollars a month to help us with the servers to support that. Yep. Somebody said, will there be a recording of this session? For sure, totally. Some more questions that people usually have. When do I get early access? We're gonna do it in small batches. We'll continue to scale this out over the next month or two. You may not get access right away. You may be lucky enough to get rotation in that access right away. But even if you didn't, it's obviously worth it. And that's why we're doing lifetime so that we don't have to stress about, well, I didn't get my 30 days of access for my 30 day, you know, my $99 payment, whatever. Like, that's why we're doing this. Like, you want to be lifetime? Great. You commit to lifetime. We're committing to you. We'll get you access as soon as we can get you access. But it may not be right away because we want to do it in groups and stages. Is that pretty cool? What's the future pricing of Elite going to be? We have not finalized it yet, but as we roll out new things like smart pricing, Elite will be at least $299 or higher. I've personally pushed for $799. I think that it will be in the multiple, multiple hundreds per month because I think you get a lot. You get 100 bots, for God's sakes, and all the best stuff. Is Option Alpha a broker or an RIA? 
We're not a broker. We're not a RIA. We are a software as a service provider. We provide the technology to automate what you want to do. You have to turn on the bots. You have to choose the tickers. You have to set the pricing or the parameters for smart pricing, right? Like you're in control of all of those elements. We do not auto trade the strategy that we think is best for you. That's not what we do. Cool. Do we charge a commission? No, we do not charge additional add on commissions when you auto trade with us. Naturally, you're still responsible for any commissions or fees in your broker. The broker is the broker. We just automate the process. Your money is not held with us. We don't charge commissions. We just automate the process. Does Option Alpha get a kickback for trades? This is my favorite one to answer. This is my favorite one to answer. No. We do not receive kickbacks for trades from our broker partners. So there's no agreement where like, if people trade 45 contracts a month, we get paid some sum of money that you guys don't see. That does not happen with us. Won't happen with us. My company, our company, our company's alignment is strictly aligned with yours in making sure that you have the best possible platform and experience, not with how many trades you place. So if you start auto trading and it causes you to trade less, great. That's awesome. If it causes you to trade more and you are okay with that, great. That's awesome. We don't have an incentive to make you trade more or less. I just want to automate it for you. Whatever you want to do, I want to automate it. Does that seem pretty fair? Like I, I feel like that's a fair way to go about this. By the way, this has always been one of my biggest gripes with platforms that are free, so-called free, because they sell your order flow. Like those trades were never free, ever. Probably still aren't free. There's a cost to doing that. You just didn't see the cost because you, you got front run by somebody else. Cool. Does Option Alpha, how do we make money? We generate revenue through reoccurring subscriptions to our platform. It is a pay to access the software deal. You pay for access to the software and the technology. By the way, if you are a pro member, if you are a pro member, if you've paid for any of our products before, shoot us an email team at option alpha because we do credit some of the things that are already included in, in your uh, lifetime membership. Like if you paid for the toolbox or some of the research, for sure, we'll go through there and credit those. And the last two months of your pro membership, if you're a pro member or an elite member. Yep. So like Tim, I know you've been option alpha user for a long time. Some of the tools for sure. Of course, it seems like the right thing to do. Like if you paid for something, it's already included in lifetime. Like, we'll, by the way, we do this automatically, even if you don't ask. Like, even if you don't ask, we'll go in there and check and do it for you. Is Option Alpha a standalone trading application? Yes. It's not auto trading of select strategies. I had somebody email me the other day and they're like, I can auto trade these strategies at this newsletter. And I'm like, no, no, we're not a newsletter provider. This is a new platform. You can auto trade whatever you want. You don't have to be subscribed to somebody's newsletter. You come in and build your own bots and use it that way. Will we offer a free trial? This is a great question. And again, because I want you to make the best decision possible, this is why I'm telling you all the facts right up front. Will we offer a free trial? Yes, we will offer a free trial when we launch on February 1st. So if you're not sure and you're like, I don't know, I want to do the trial, great. You can wait till February 1st. There's no more lifetime pricing and you'll have to be a monthly paying member. But if that's what you want to do, there will be a trial available. 
I try to demo as much as what I could tonight to show you what you'll get access to because that's what it'll be or whatever we continue to improve upon. But like, I feel like the demo showed you exactly what you're going to get. But if you want to do the trial, then you can do the trial. That's fine. Will there be a mobile app? Yes. We're currently focused on making sure the web-based version works, but there will be a mobile, mobile app in the future. Do I have to learn how to code? No, you don't have to learn how to code. In fact, you never have to need to code anything on the platform. We spent a lot of time making sure that was the case. Does auto trading run in the cloud? Yes. The new platform was built as a web-based software which means it runs completely in the cloud, meaning you never have to download any local desktop software. You don't have to have your browser open for the system to work. You log in, run your strategies. You can smash your computer for all I care. The strategies will still be running and you can log in from a different computer. Okay. By the way, this week, on the 28th, the 29th, and the 30th, we're doing like a long three-day, just huge live streaming masterclass type thing. I got to be totally honest with you guys. I have no idea what direction this is going to take. We've got a general outline for the three days, but I just want to make myself available for like four to five hours every day live to help you as much as possible. It's totally free. You don't have to be an elite member. It's for everybody. Totally free. I hope you can join. I, I, I don't know what to expect. This is the first time we're going to do this. <laughs> Rocco said, we're totally prepared. We're like 90% prepared. This is the first time we've done this. I have no idea what to expect but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna go through bots. We're gonna go through back testing. We're gonna take our time. We're gonna build out a lot of bots. We're gonna talk, I think my most favorite thing that I think we're gonna discuss is day three. Day three will be probably the fun one for me because we're gonna talk at a high level about how to group and build portfolios of bots. That is gonna be a really cool conversation. Nope, and masterclass is not for members only. It's for everybody. Yeah, it's for everybody. So that's it. This is it. This is the last slide. Remember the price goes up November 1st. On the 31st at midnight, that is the last call this Saturday. If you're interested, just go join now. Like stop putting it off, right? If you're interested, go join now. If you have a question, let us know what that question is because it's going to be crazy the last day or two. And I know we're going to get questions that we, frankly, we may not have time to get to, even though we all look like the cats in the beginning of this, where we're going just so fast with our hands. And it is Eastern time. Eastern time. Thanks, Brian, for poking that bear. That's funny. Yes. Elite Lifetime includes access without the additional charge. By the way, if you are, are already a Lifetime member, you get this included. We've had people who have been at the Lifetime member since 2014. Do you think that I would seriously charge them to do this? No, they got it. That's paying dividends. That's paying dividends. By the way, I will just sit here as long as possible and answer as many questions as you have. So if you have any questions here, you um, have any concerns or like, can I do this? Can I do this? Just let me know. Just let me know, please. Okay. I'll just sit here and just answer as many questions as I can. Uh, Tim said, just upgraded. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Is there a scanner that can scan a list of overbought in the system? So you can set up a scanner. Keyshore to scan a list of tickers. That's going to be the new repeater function. You just have to define what those are. Dylan said, very well done. Going to be on the webinar once more. We'll likely be signing up. Awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, can we pay in installments? Yeah, shoot us an email if you um, want to get some installment plans. 
Um, we do separate those out into uh, a couple different payment options. So shoot us an email, team at option alpha. We can put those in there. Thank you, Waylon Mann, for being here. Um, thank you, Prem. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kishore. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, nice system. Appreciate it. I see the value in this as a newbie, but at the same time, the question is whether a newbie friendly or not. Would there be support for the process in learning? So it's a good question. So yeah, of course, we're gonna support you in the process as we build out new training and new courses and videos. So that will be a constantly evolving thing. I think if you're a newbie though, if you're a newbie, this to me is frankly a no brainer if you've decided that options trading is gonna be something you wanna do in the future. So if you haven't made, that's where I've told people no. So I, I've told a number of people no in emails where I've said, look, if you don't even know if options are going to be on the radar, you don't even know if trading is going to be on the radar. Like, no, don't sign up for this. That's not logical. But if you are somebody who's like, you know what? I'm going to be trading. I'm going to be trading stocks. I'm going to be trading options. I'm going to be committed to this. I, I think it's something that you'll get a lot of value out of. And it will force you to, from the start, be very mindful of the strategies that you choose to trade versus the alternative, which is winging it, right? Or some version of winging it. Does that help? Thanks, Brian, man. See you later. Uh, Kishore, unfortunately, I'm stuck with Schwab. That's okay. Schwab will be in there at some point. I knew, but I see the value in the software. What do you recommend? I think I just went through that. Are you using bots for your trading? Not yet, but as soon as I do, we'll start transitioning everything to bots. Yep, I'm gonna make the transition with everyone. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I didn't get a chance to listen to the full webinar. Will I still trade through that platform or yours? You can do either one, George. So if you wanna trade on Option Alpha, you can do that. If you wanna trade on TOS, you can do like a hybrid version where you use some trading there and some here. Okay, so Canadians, let me talk to you guys really quick on the Canadians. If you are in Canada, let me be totally clear on this because I wanna make sure I get this again on record. We do not support Canada. We are busting our butts to try and get Canada as an option. I know you guys need a big win. The best chance that we have for Canada as I see it right now is that Tastyworks is actively trying to open up the availability for Canada as a country they support. I think they've got some regulatory hurdles to get through and they're actively working through those. But until that happens, there's just no timeline on it. And I wish there could be. I wish there could be a can, uh, an option there. Yeah, and I know they've said, and, and George added in the comments here, they said it'll be in Q1. I know, and, and, and I'm hopeful that that is the case. And if it is, great, that's awesome. But, but we don't know for sure yet, right? We don't know for sure yet. So I wish I could give you an option to say, look, it'll definitely be here next year, but that's not the case. If you're in Canada, I still think, and this is my personal opinion, you make your own decision based on the facts, okay? I still think that it's a valuable tool, even if you can't auto trade yet or ever, because you can find new ideas, you can back test, right? You can even paper trade a bunch of strategies and get alerts and then manually make the trades, worst case. But, but I, don't, I don't know when or if Canada will be supported. But trust me when I tell you, like I bug a lot of people and it's one of my amazing specialties to be someone who bugs them for an update until we get something. I think my team would agree. Like I just constantly like, do we do this? Do we do this? Do we do this? Do we have this? That's one of my amazing specialties. I'm very persistent. It's the reason I got my wife to say yes, because she knew I would just keep asking until she said yes. So that's where we're at. Does that help, George? And anybody else? Okay, great. If you guys have any other follow-up questions, let me know real quick. Man, we're almost at three hours today. It was incredible, incredible, incredible. George said, if I sign up and then trade the autos, Rex manually. 
Well, so if you did paper trading, by the way, if you did paper trading, you could then choose to have the bots send you an email when the paper trading bot opened a position or closed a position. And so that would just notify you, but then you could try to mimic that same trade like right away, just like what people normally do now. All right, cool. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Dylan. Yep, we'll do a recording. We'll send out a link to your email. Just give us a couple hours to process it. Um, if you sign up, you do get access to all the toolbox and everything in Elite Membership now. Yep, you do get that. Um, just be cognizant that that back tester is outdated now because we have new data on the new platform. So we'll update it, but it's still using the legacy technology. Mike say, can the platform send messages to your phone? <laughs> such as a telegram. So when we do the mobile app, then we can do the push notifications, but, um, but you can link in like, I mean, you get emails on your phone, right? Uh, so that's how we do it. How do I get the credit for the toolbox if I'm lifetime? Um, just send us an email, Nick, team at option alpha. But even if you sign up, we'll just take care of those credits for you automatically. So you can just sign up, we'll go in, we'll credit everything back to you. We do that as a default for everybody, whether they ask for it or not team at option alpha if you have any questions at all. Okay, great. Do existing elite members need to do anything else? Nope, you're good, Ron. Ron, you've been a member for a long time. How many, has it been years? Yeah, over three years. I, I was going to say, I remember writing your, one of your, you were one of the first names that we wrote up on the big wall. Yeah, but yeah, you got it. You're in, just wait for the email to get in. Francis said, how can I be able to access paper to paperwork? I'm not sure, you mean paper trading? Yeah, you can just use paper trading just right from the start. You can make everything paper trading. And then you can start paper trading all your bots, find new ideas, come up with new strategies, and then you can mimic those trades if you wanted to. All right, cool. Looks like I'm gonna end it here. Thank you guys so much for being here. It seems like we've reached about the end of the questions. Seriously, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. I, I do not take that lightly. Three hours out of your day is, is not, uh, a short amount of time by any stretch. Thank you to my team for being here to help out. If you guys have any questions at all, please, please, please let us know. This is it. This is the last week before the price goes up. So um, here's your chance, essentially. Please get your questions answered well in advance. We just want to make sure that we support you guys and, and help give you as much information as you can so you can make the best decision possible. But thank you so much for spending your time with us. On a Monday, tell all your friends about us, tell all your trading buddies and girlfriends and all the people that you follow what we're doing here if you enjoy it. I don't think I asked that enough, but I'm literally asking you guys, spread the word about Option Alpha. If you have had a great experience, if you've had a great time here, whatever your experience has been, just like spread the word about Option Alpha. Tell people about what we're doing, share it with your friends. This is stuff that I think helps people tremendously. So, um, so it's great because it makes you look amazing because you're sharing something that helps somebody else out too, right? So thank you guys so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Until next time, happy trading.